call the meeting to order. Everyone, please rise. Ms. Bird, you lead us, please. Father God, we thank you. We come before your presence once again, God, asking God that you will order our steps direct our path, God, that we might be on one accord today, God, to get a job done. We ask that you cover our first responders, those that have authority over us, and give us the right path to take. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. Amen. Pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Madam Clerk, roll call, please. This is a meeting of the Henry County Board of County Commissioners being held on Tuesday, July 28, 2020 at 5 p.m. in the County Commission Chambers in LaBelle, Florida. In attendance are Chairman Mitchell Wills, Vice Chair Emma Bird, Commissioner Daryl Harris, Commissioner Michael Swindle by phone, Commissioner Carson Turner, County Administrator Jennifer Davis, County Attorney Mark Lapp, and Interim Clerk Kimberly Barano. Thank you, ma'am. As we get started tonight, if, there, if you'd like to address the board tonight, there are sheets on the back. If you would get those, fill them out, please. Bring them up to the desk right here to my right. Uh, they'll get you in. We'll also be taking uh, just a few moments between each um, uh, vote tonight. The people on the phone have an opportunity to come in. Do they have that sign-in information where it's available? The phone information is going to be 877-853-5257. You'll be then prompted to put in an access code, which is 955-2625-7584 pound. That's, that's how you can dial in if you have uh, comments or questions tonight as we're going along. Uh, first thing tonight on the agenda is under bids, 2020-22. Move to accept. A second. I have a motion by Commissioner Harris and a second by Commissioner Bird. Um, is there any discussion? Just for the public info, just for the public information, just want them to know that the, uh, it's a radar speed sign and it's Bluetooth, so it'll be able to identify you so much as how often you go through there. Speed, am I right, Shane? Uh, yes, ma'am. For the record, Shane Parker, County Engineer and Public Works Director. It'll have Bluetooth capability so that we can download data to find out the times most frequently for speeding is occurring so we can give it to the sheriff's department for okay. enforcement activity if they so choose to just want to draw their attention to the public thank you uh, for getting that move mr parker we appreciate it any better discussion all those in favor aye, aye. opposed aye. motion carries i oh, didn't go to the phone did it right you can ask right now real quick if there's anyone on the phone that any input on that if you'd like to call in do that now forgot about that. I'll keep them on the next couple. Okay, moving along. RFQ 2020-15. Move to accept. Yes, sir. Second. Second the acceptance of uh, the master agreement with AECOM. Okay, we got a motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Harris. Is there any discussion on that? Uh, Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Will, will all of the supplemental, they'll, they'll all be brought back to us? All supplemental task authorizations or SDAs we brought back for the board. First ones you'll get in August will be, well, you'll get them for August. They'll commence in October be for miscellaneous services as you typically do. And then if there's a project, that'll come before you later with how, how to be funded. So. Uh, Mr. Mr. Shane, just clarification. Normally our standard agreement allows for the administrator to sign STAs less than 10,000. Is that something that would still be? Absolutely, Mr. Chair. I would still push for that to, to occur. Absolutely, yes. <clears throat> okay, is there any further discussion? And, uh, Mr. Swindle? Any discussion from the phone? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, C under that is RFQ 2020 20. Mr. Chair, I make a uh, motion to approve the five year master agreement with Parker Budget Smith Architects. I second it. We got a motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Bird. Is there further discussion on that? Uh, Chairman? Yes, sir. Object, could we add that same 10,000 limit? Yes, County absolutely. absolutely. That's part of the that should be, yeah, we need that on all, yes. Is there any further discussion? Anyone from the phone would like to comment on that? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. D, RFQ 2020-21. Move to accept. Second. Got a motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Bird. Any further discussion on this? <coughs> 
That is all DOT money. It's all DOT money. All DOT funding. It's not going to be another Helms Road, is it? <laughs> I don't think so. It better that not. I'm my district. But that was all DOT money, too. Yeah. All right. Any further discussion on this? Anyone from the phone? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. RFQ 2020-24. Mr. Chair, move to accept. Second the motion to accept Rock Enterprises and the expansion of Fort Dino Cemetery layout. Okay, and this is, um, we got a motion by Commissioner Byrd, second by Commissioner Turner. Is this basically going along the same lines that we had originally started with a different idea? We're going to do uh, portion one, portion two, three, four? Yes, there will be a master agreement for CEI services. Right now we're out to bid for the master stormwater management system, the pruner berm, outfall structure, and a portion up near the be elbow. The east side, it? On the east side right. where Cemetery Road um, bends. And this would be a five-year contract and like to do the same thing for ten thousand dollars absolutely how many acres the cemetery is about 20 acres but we're not doing this that. Be, doing let's just be that. a portion just a portion it'll have some drainage improvements and then we did put the option in for paving a an internal road but we may end up just doing the subgrade and road and bridge come back later building it but it's in the bid that's coming so we can make that decision when the prices come in okay we may need to send tommy out there for a while well, we do have gopher tortoises removed, and that's not a joke, that's serious. We're, um, yeah. the board approved that, and we're working on an agreement right now. Very good. Council. I was out just the other day and saw that. I was riding through the, through the area looking. We've, we've had quite a few four-wheelers out there still having a good time, so we got some pretty good-sized holes out there. Okay, any further discussion on this? No, sir. Any from the phone? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. That's going to bring us to the consent agenda. We are pulling C4 for discussion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to approve the balance of the consent agenda uh, with regards to item C4. I second it. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Byrd for balance of consent agenda, pulling C4. Is there any further discussion on that? Any from the phone? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries, uh, Mr. Turner. Uh, Mr. Chair, I just, I, I can't support a $90,000 trailer. Uh, I don't <coughs> care what special wind concept it has with clean air versus dirty air. Uh, give me two more quotes and I may be a little bit more comfortable with it, but well, that thing looks mighty expensive for what it is. And I may sound just as ignorant as the day is long right now, but it makes my tummy hurt and I can't get on board. Tell me why I'm wrong. No, I'm, I'm in agreement with you. Okay. Um, I was actually having the same discussion. That I was Give Allard $50,000 and he'll outfit you one heck of a toy hauler to <laughs> make it meet this. And I'm sure we'll yes. be told, oh, it doesn't have biohazard and the two-way air and this, that, and the other. But yeah, yeah, that's... I can't pull the trigger on nothing like that either. J. Beach Group. Don't, uh, don't they get three quotes? Supposed to have three quotes. I yeah. bet they did. I, I won't be shocked if they don't. You know, and, and maybe this is the lowest one, but I just I can't, I can't. I know what Shane can do with ninety thousand dollars for road and bridge, and how much is going to be utilized. And I know COVID is a horrible animal, and we need to have the ability to mobile test. But I don't know what the volume of testing. I'm not asking for this information right now. Right. I don't know what the volume of Henry County constituents that we've tested. <clears throat> I don't know what the state's kicking in. The state may be paying for 100 percent of this. The federal government may be paying for this. Ninety thousand dollars. I can't. I, I can't just pull the trigger on it. That's it. I'm sorry. Thank you, I Mr. Agree. Chair. So we'll bring back more information. We'll bring that. Okay. Thank you, Ms. Davis. Thank you. Okay. Let's see. Under rewards and appearances, uh, we had Ray Robinson set for tonight, but they <laughs> they are not here. Um, so we're going to be moving to public here. Can you come here a second, Jennifer? Please. <laughs> Mr. Harris won't loan me his glasses. <laughs> we've, been, uh, we've been recognizing employees for their years of service. And Ms. Davis doesn't like to be recognized, and I'm, I'm just really enjoying this. She got, she got me the other day, and this is just the beginning. 21 years of service, Ms. Davis has put in Henry County. I've been blessed to have been working a lot of those years with her, and she is such a huge asset to Henry County. 
and we are truly blessed to have her on staff. So on behalf of Hendry County, we thank you for your years of service. We appreciate you very much, and we're looking forward to the years to come. Let's sing the band. <laughs> Mr. Harris wants you to see what's in the band. Let's sing the band. We want to know That's what's in the Florida, bag. Florida jacket. Now, um, in, in keeping with what we did with everyone else, we took a picture with them, so we're going to need you to kind of stand in the middle so we can take a picture. Yeah. With it on. Yeah. Yeah. With it on, Mark said. Outside. I'll leave the mask on to memorize the occasion. There you go. Come on, Rebecca. Come on, look close. Okay. I'll take a shower. <laughs> Thank you, Ms. Davis. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not a matter of if, it's, it's just when, but what, it's not tonight, don't worry. Public hearings, petition number SE20-0001. perspective y'all gonna are, are y'all mandating night sky lighting and, and some things to could we could we get those written in just to uh, kind of preserve the dark sky out there and still with technology we have now you know we can shoot that down and be able to cover we already have that in our okay. land development code All right. um, we have lighting regulations We can just be proactive on that moving forward, uh, but you know they're 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 doing some work out there, so hopefully this mm -hmm. thing will come together. So yes, could, could be a potential good project for us. Uh, I make a motion to approve uh, as presented. <clears throat> I second. second the motion. A motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Bird. This is a hearing of the public, so if there's anyone in the public who would like to address this, you can come at this time. If there's anyone on the phone that would like to address this. Can you hear me okay, Commissioner Wills? Yes, sir, we can. Okay, just making sure. Thanks. I'm yes. good. Okay. Um, hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank Thank you. You. Have they given you a timeline of, of, of what their actions are out there? Uh, I do understand, I do believe that they are, are proceeding with work, but um, the representatives are here tonight. And that would be a good question for them on what their planned schedule is. So if I may. Um, Absolutely. Hi, for the record, Don Markley, uh, Vice President, Southeast Renewable Fuels. Our time frame uh, from this date forward is approximately 22 to 24 months to complete the project. Wonderful. It's an $180 million project, so it's a lot of money. How many employees? Ultimately, there'll be a, over 100 permanent employees during construction that should peak out at a, an average of 110, 115 employees for the construction. That's good. 100, 100 employees at 
Permanent. Permanent. Once it's built. And you well over 100 on, on coming out of the ground and going vertical. It'll slowly ramp up, but yes, when sir. it peaks out, you know, they'll move everything. It'll peak out probably around 115, so an average of 90 to 100 for the length of the project. And so with what you're talking about, $180 million scope, I would assume y'all have already, already let that project or you're in the process? We uh, are pretty well through design on all of the uh, pulp and the power generation. Uh, the civil design is virtually done. Glenn Miller has been with us for the whole time on that. But there'll be bids for all the local work to go on. The equipment supply is pretty well set. Good deal. All right. Well, we look forward to seeing that. That's a huge shot in the arm to, yep. to our region. So. We look forward to working with right, you. should add that, yeah. That's just purely the project itself, the surrounding agriculture, because we'll be, you know, trying to use it for gas and other recycled materials, vegetation, and what have you. That's a whole other ball game with a lot of other jobs, hopefully. Let's hope we don't have a hurricane that gives you a lot of bumper crop. We'll have room to store it. Yes, sir. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Right. Thank you, sir. We appreciate that. Right. Thank you. <clears throat> okay, under... Can we vote on that? We'll vote on that one, yes. I just lost my place here. B, CPA 20-0001. I move yes. to accept. I already read it. I second it. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Byrd. Again, this is a hearing of the public. Is there anyone in the public who would like to speak to this? Anyone on the phone? Do they have a Commissioner? Slide? Yes, sir. Uh, <clears throat> just... If, if Ms. Simmons wouldn't mind, you normally we get a 5-0 um, LPA approval and we got a 4-1. Is there any, do, do we know any of their concerns? The one. Yes, I'd be happy to speak to that. Um, the LPA member that uh, voted uh, against it was uh, for the reason of that it was not guaranteed to be a um, housing for um, teachers. And um, the, there was one that abstained, and that was just simply um, the representative from the school district because the adjacent property is owned by the school That's district. Right. Do they have a start date? Uh, no, I don't have that information. But again, um, the applicant and their agent, um, I think, are here. I know the that, agent is. That's OK. They might have that information. That's OK. OK. okay. Mr. Yeah, Chairman. public hearing. Yeah, on this one, we did have somebody comment at the LPA meeting over the phone, so just want to be clear that we allow a few seconds. Maybe they're on, maybe they're not, I don't know. Okay, if there is anyone on the phone who would like to speak to this, now is the time. If you're trying to figure out how to do that again, the phone number is 877-853-5257. You'll be prompted to put in an access code, 955-2625-7584, pound. Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Was that an opposed or an aye? Uh, Commissioner Swindle? No, I don't know. Did you hear me, Commissioner Swindle? I agree. Oh, okay. I didn't know you come in kind of late, so I wasn't sure. I'm sorry. <laughs> okay, C, petition RZ190011. Yeah. Commissioners, this is a, the companion uh, PUD rezoning for the comp plan amendment that you just approved and the plan for this project is to uh, construct um, six duplexes for a total of 12 dwelling units um, if you've looked at the um, the concept plan you'll see that it was well planned out and there's internal sidewalks there's a recreation area landscaping and perimeter perimeter buffers around it um, just to ensure that we're addressing compatibility and the fit into the community. Staff is very supportive of this project because it provides a, uh, a different type of housing stock, whereas the surrounding area is, is all single family residential um, lots and or single family existing residents. And we felt like this was a, uh, a good addition. <coughs> I move to accept. I second it. Nice. Well, motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Byrd. This is also a hearing of the public. Does anyone like to address this tonight? 
Anyone from the phone? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, petition D, LDC 20, 0001. Yes, uh, commissioners, at the uh, June 16th board meeting, um, staff um, requested the board approval to proceed with amendments to the sign ordinance. You know, as you know, we uh, adopted a, a complete rewrite last year of the sign ordinance, and we knew that there was probably going to be some fixes along the way. Um, but, um, and, and to remind you, the reason why we had to go through that process and was because of the ruling that said that we cannot uh, regulate content, which makes it very hard to regulate signs. Uh, but I think we've managed to do it with what we have. But in this case, um, because of the campaign season, we realized that there were some uh, over, overly restrictive language in the code that applied to those types of signs along with any other sign. Um, it's not just really for campaign signs per se. It could be for any business um, that during this period of time that they could have additional signage. So having said that, um, we came up with, um, in, in working with Brenda Hoots and um, with, of course, Mark Lapp, myself, and, and I think that was it, but primarily coming up with two options that uh, to be considered. And we presented both options to the LPA. Um, and uh, basically, the LPA uh, preferred uh, the, here's, let me go to the two options here that we have. Um, the, and I want to describe it, so I'm, I'm doing this right. Option one would allow signs to be posted 60 days prior and 10 days after any public election in Hendry County. Um, additional signs located on private property during this time period um, when, uh, when, a, when a primary <coughs> election occurs in August, signs do not have to be removed within the 10 days after the primary. So this would help them, you know, anybody that wins in the primary and is going into the general that they don't have to take their signs down but we wanted to make sure that there was a limit between the two election dates um, so that they weren't there for several okay. months so does that include yard signs yes sir yeah and so um, the 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 change of um, that uh, option one offered was that it wouldn't limit the number of signs but it would but instead the aggregate amount of signs which grants the property owners additional flexibility. For example, in residential districts, signs could not exceed an aggregate of 40 square feet and six feet in height, which means that you could have several different signs of different sizes um, on a residential parcel. Um, as far as non-residential districts, and that includes agriculture, industrial, and commercial, civic, and so on. Anything else besides resident, residential, um, residentially zoned property. And that limitation for those uh, properties would be um, that um, the sign, um, signs could not exceed 200 square feet in aggregate, again, allowing you to mix and match sizes that if you wanted to. And we, we, based, we based our recommendations on the typical signs that you find for campaign signs. Um, but we've, for the um, non-residential districts, we're looking at um, a, a, a certain amount of signs for every quarter mile and, and then every portion thereof thereafter, there would be allowed more. Um, option two, it basically is the same, except it doesn't limit the number of signs, which would mean that you could have as many signs as you wanted on private property. I mean, it just, you know, yard sale, Mr. Chair, several. I, I appreciate Ms. Simmons going through in great detail. Uh, I also saw where you, you and the LPA all recommended option one. Was your, your 
Yes, sir. Preferred thoughts. So I would I would make a motion to uh, implement option one, and uh, I don't think there's any tweaks that you all may have. I'm good with it. Well, if, I, if I may, sir, I want to add that um, after the LPA, I had a discussion with Brenda Hoots, and she agreed that we need a limitation on signs, that we don't want to have it you know, um, the other way. So I just wanted you to know that, that uh, she has supported that as well. Okay, we have a motion by Commissioner on the floor. Is there a second? Second. Second, second by Commissioner Harris. This is also a hearing of the public. If anyone of the public would like to address this. Anyone on the phone? Uh, uh, go ahead, Commissioner Swindle. Uh, Mr. Chairman, and, and uh, I guess this is a question for Attorney Lapp and or Ms. Emblage. Um, just, just for clarity, for mine and everyone else's sake, when uh, this ordinance passes, just just uh, uh, speculation, when would it be in effect? It's, it's effective 10 days after filing with the Department of State. So it's, you know, the clerk usually gets it e-filed with the state by the end of this week, okay. early next week, and it'll be 10 days after that. You know, staff, right. I think, are kind of in a standby mode on enforcing it. Right. The, the okay. More strict restrictions right now, right? Okay. So, so essentially, there would be no, no, no changes to the current campaign sign ordinances or anything, uh, and through at least the general election this year, most likely. Now you're safe uh, right now. You, no, 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 no. Through the primary, then it probably moved to the general. You would see change. Well, no, it would okay. come into effect before the primary, so they would be able to utilize this. Right. Okay. Yeah. So you, you can go well, on, you can go and put them up, Swindle. <laughs> All right. Well, hey, I, I ain't the only one, and but but just following the timeline that Attorney Lap was just talking about, it seemed like it would be quite a bit longer than that. No, no, no. They're not gonna catch you. No, maybe, <laughs> maybe, maybe, maybe two weeks. <coughs> oh. a few days. I can't afford fines now. Well, I'm Mr. Chair, Ms. Emma, is there a permit needed? Steve, put it. Pardon me. Is there a permit needed? Um, these are uh, no permit required okay. signs. Thank you. You're welcome. Again, this is a hearing of the public. If anyone would like to address this, uh, we've had no one call and no one addressed this. We're going to give this one more minute. Any further discussion from the board? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Thank you. You sure, Mike? <laughs> I'm good. All right. Uh, Mr. Lapp. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board, we have the amendment to the small county surtax. This is a uh, the provision in your ordinance that restricts, where you restrict yourself to using the sales tax proceeds to only capital projects, but then you had an exception for that that you passed for 10 years where you can use it for non-capital. So uh, that's expiring the end of this fiscal year. Presuming you want to extend that allowance, you need to uh, pick a new fiscal year date. I mean, sometimes we've done it two years, sometimes we've done it one. I mean, if, if you think it's going to last two years, I was ask that you do it for two years because it's kind of a just, a, you know, unless you really feel like you want to go through this process every year. I think two years is a good deal. Is that in the form of a motion? Yeah, I'll make a motion for two years. Commissioner Harris's motion to approve the uh, ordinance as presented, um, specifying it for the two-year time period for the surtax. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion on this? Anyone from the phone? Carrying none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Next item is the extension of the six cent local option fuel tax. This is uh, something that is due to expire at the end of the year. It's the uh, there's two sales taxes for gas. This is the six cent one. So uh, the recommendation is to extend that for another 10 years. And then also along with this, you have to approve interlocal agreements with the cities for distributing the proceeds. Um, we've, we're proposing the same allocation as currently, which is 65% for the county, 20.67 for Clewiston, and 14.33 um, for LaBelle. How, how do you come up with those numbers? I, I, they're carry forward numbers from existing as far as how they came up with originally. Our staff you know, chain for your time, but you were in on a meeting with Steve McCown and I don't know if Ron Zimmerling was there, but the gist is the powers that be all got together and said, we like this percentage of the pie. We like that percentage of this pie. 
We're going to cut the large pine to 16 pieces and make it a little bit smaller of a bite. That's a joke from Phil Pelletier I learned, by the way. But anyway, um, everybody had buy into it, and so we're agreeing to push that forward again. The time frame is 10 years, possibly? Yes. Uh, you mean it has to stay that number for 10 years, regardless of what happens? When's the last time this was visited? Ten years ago, or the city's had input on it lately? No, sir. It was not ten years ago because I was elected twelve years ago, and I think it was five or six years ago. Okay, so it's recently been re yes, visited sir. recently. I'm just wondering I, if the city's had input since. I, I can say that there's a state statute that requires that every, um, every two years that you conduct a public hearing on the allocation. And so you may not remember that, but every spring, every other spring, we've been doing that. So in the spring of 19, you had a hearing on the continuation of the current allocation, and you've done that every two years going backwards. There's never been any discussion. It's all one just, yeah, it's all the same. Let's carry forward. And, you know. I remember one time, though, we, we, we kind of got sideways. Yeah. Years, they were to in 2010, I believe it was, so there was discussion to change it. but. I don't remember. I don't think it was changed, but no, I, I'm not sure. It was. No, it was yeah. moved. No, sir. It, it all settled. Yeah, so. It seems awful low for uh, LaBelle. Uh -huh. I was just going to say that uh, it was before my time, but Cloyston did have the same public hearing. They required to hold it. The municipalities are every two years. And they had it in May and concurred. And I'm recommending it at the next meeting to improve it. For the Thank you, Ms. Martin. Uh, not that um, I believe it has something to do with road miles. With what? Road miles within oh, well. the county, city, unincorporated. And so I think that's why Lewiston's a little higher than LaBelle. And that was the premise. I could be, I'm not 100% on that, but I, it, it's something to do like that. There was, that was the methodology. And that's, and that's how it was established originally. Thank you. Mm -hmm. But if we revisit it every two years, then we could change it. Mm -hmm. As long as everybody's good with it, that's fine. I'm just, just curious. I'm just asking you know, when last time we visited. And two you, years. you hear that bickering all the time. So I, in order to put the bickering to bed, we can say we discussed it and we, had, and we were all on the same page. So it is what it is. So. When you reference bickering, Mr. Chair, you talking about Fulston LaBelle? I absolutely. <laughs> there's, there's actual animals. <laughs> From time to time. Okay. That's just Not sure. this year, though, because our guess, our game, we all got canceled. So you're safe. You all forfeit. Mr. Chairman? <laughs> okay. So, Mr. Chairman? Yes, sir. I know, I know we have a motion on the floor, but um, I, I, I totally agree, and I can see both sides of it. Do we have to answer this tonight? Would we be wise to give staff time to research the exact reason why and make sure that we are being equitable to both cities? We are being equitable. Shane I think cities no. have already in, engaged it, but if that, staff that's would a like good to question, Mr. Swindle. Yeah. <laughs> it says that it, um, it had already been reviewed by uh, Randy and uh, Ron already from the city of yeah. Tulsa. No, no, obviously, I, I guess. They already did. Yeah, I was just asking a question when it, when it was vetted. That's Mr. Chair, cool. let, let him know, too, that Randy's here. Rand, the city of Tulsa's manager's here. Yeah. He, said, did you hear that, Commissioner here. Swindle? I, I could hear Randy speaking, but I couldn't hear what he was saying. Yeah, he said they had also, he was bringing this back to their board for recommendation to approve as well. He said everything's cool in the game. <laughs> well, but but did Ron say that? I mean, I see Randy said that, but he's getting a higher percentage. <laughs> Ron said it last time. Ron, Ron, Ron said it to me via, you know, an email that that was his staff position of support. But I think that'll change in two years. And it says that Ron, the city of LaBelle, they are both in agreeable to carry forward with this. For the next okay. 10 years. Well, Not we're ready 10 for a years. vote then. Yeah. I, I, I think I made a motion to two, you did. Yeah. Yeah. Commissioner Harris seconded it. Yeah. Yes, well, we can review it in two years. We are going to, like yeah. we do every okay. two years. We're then we can change it then. <laughs> yep. Any further discussion? Any from the telephone? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Yeah. Motion carries. Mr. Parker? Yeah. And Mr. For FYI, you've got a bunch of stuff there, but nothing that was. It's staff reports, Ms. Davis. Mr. Chairman, can I just clarify something on the question from Mr. Swindle a couple sure. items ago where he's asking about the effective date for the sign ordinance? Yes. I, I went back and looked, and the, the effective date for it will be upon filing with the Department of State. 
the 10 days I was thinking of is the clerk is required to file it with the Department of State within 10 days of the board's adoption. I know Ms. Bichelle usually gets it up there much quicker than the 10 days. Okay. So it will be effective the minute it gets filed with the Department of State, so it might be as soon as, you know, later this week for the sign ordinance. Did you hear that Thank comment? you, Attorney Yes. Good. Okay, staff reports. Yes, sir. So the first item I had was a placeholder for Hendry Cares. And so um, before the meeting, I emailed a draft plan. Uh, we talked about it at the budget workshop as far as the bu buckets. So I'm just seeking consensus of the uh, breakup of the 75-25 um, that we discussed during the budget workshop and permission to move forward and execute um, the application process for government entities as well as the uh, private entities. So moved. Second, Mr. Chair, with discussion? Yes, sir. Uh, Ms. Davis, would you mind giving just a general recap? Because I'm, I'm sure there may be some people that tuned in to tonight's meeting that weren't necessarily on with the workshop. And just uh, the fact that I anticipate what sure. we've decided is we're going to roll it out sooner than later. Is that correct? Yes. Yes, sir. Yeah. So yeah. I'll just give a brief overview. Just bear with me one minute. Let me just get it in front of me on the computer. It'll be easier. So Hendry County um, is receiving um, monies from the CARES dollars for COVID-19. The total amount of money that Hendry County is receiving is uh, a total of a little over $7.5 That consists of money from the federal government from the CARES Act in addition to the Florida Housing Finance Corporation um, of $240,000, uh, again, for a total of a little over $7.5 million. Uh, th these dollars must be spent on or before December 30th or we will lose them. Uh, staff has uh, developed a plan uh, and a working group um, that met in the sunshine that consisted of all of our governmental entities, which included both of our cities, our health department, our hospital, all our constitutional officers, our economic development community, um, or their director um, on their behalf, our extension office and BOCC staff. Um, we have recommended a 75-25 split, 75% being for governmental entities. Each governmental entity was asked to submit a list of needs for their departments and their entities um, due to COVID-19. These expenses uh, will be a benefit for all taxpayers of Hendry County. A lot of these um, expenses that we are able to cover for COVID-19 is necessary to keep our community safer, but also are things that we would have needed to do in future budget years, and it will save um, Hendry County taxpayers going forward. The other 25% will be for private entities and will consist of individual and business assistance. Of the 25%, it will, um, and the Florida housing portion, it'll be $2.1 million. It will assist with mortgage, rent, utilities, and workforce development assistance for our Hendry County residents, as well as business assistance. Uh, for the businesses, um, it will, equate um, based on the total number of employees that they have on a scale of 10, 15, and $20,000 allocations um, to help with those businesses that have been affected by COVID, depending on the number of employees. And also for individual assistance, it will um, pay again for the rent, the utility, the mortgage, um, and also there's an allocation for food pantries. Um, Individuals that apply for this assistance have to meet minimum income um, qualifications. Hendry County will be posting um, via multiple and every avenue possible to get the word out to our constituents later this week um, in anticipation to start on Monday, August 3rd, the application process. It'll be online. Um, everything will be automated. There will also be a phone line designated um, with assistance to help you through the application process. 
And so you can go on and look at the FAQs. Um, it'll help you um, see what is available and what the criteria is ahead of time. So you can go ahead and work on getting all of those um, pieces of information together in order to apply. It'll be on a first come first serve basis. Each bucket, if you will, um, will be departmentalized with the allocations. If you submit an application that is not complete, you will have so many days to re, um, give the appropriate information so you won't lose your place in line. So it's very important if we request additional information that you respond quickly so you don't, um, so you keep your place as far as your application. And so again, we're going to be um, rolling, it, rolling it out in a couple different phases. The first phase will come out um, Monday and um, we um, look forward to helping everyone in the process. Thank you, Ms. Davis. So we had a motion on the floor by Commissioner Harrison and a second by Commissioner Turner. Um, is there any further discussion on the board? Anyone from the phone? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. The second item I have before you is the trim rate that um, has to be set at tonight's meeting in order to give the property appraiser um, the information uh, for the trim notices. During the meeting, we talked about the current rate, our rollback rate, and a few rates in between. Um, one of the proposed rates um, that we were looking at was a 7.585, and then we also talked about a 7.75, and so I will... Mr. Chair, I'd make the motion uh, in the form to set trim at 7.75 with the possibility of uh, bringing that down uh, to as low as rollback, uh, unless Commissioner Harris or anybody would like to propose potentially bringing it lower and then uh, making that also dependent upon our county administrator bringing us back hard numbers with regards to what we need for uh, finding the ability to give a COLA and the revenue estimates based upon what the state is going to tell us. Second motion. Here we got a, mo a motion by Commissioner Turner and a second by Commissioner Harris. Really millage will be set at 7.75 with the possibility of coming back even as low as rollback. Is there any further discussion on the board? Any from the phone? And, and just uh, for, for the record, Mr. Chairman, we probably ought to announce the public hearing dates for the budget at, at this point just because it's relevant to the discussion. And they're different from usual, for, from our usual second, fourth Tuesday um, routine. I don't know if you want to do that or me. or Mr. Chair, Mark, have, Jennifer, have those dates been set in stone and cannot move anymore? Um, one... One mostly is set in stone. The other that's is not. because of the school boards. Uh, well, well, everybody, we have to balance. Yeah, the, okay. So, yeah, the reason for making a change is because we can't do it the same night as the school board budget hearing, and their final hearing is on Tuesday the 8th, and that would have been our regular time to do our tentative. So we had to bump off the 8th. And so um, the date that we landed on is Thursday the 10th for the tentative. And as far as whether it's set in stone, um, we have a mail out going for the east fire increase, you know, a notice that has to go out. It's going in the trim notice uh, with a trim envelope. And it's like all done. It's, I think it's copied. It's not mailed yet, but it's very, very deep in, and I don't know if it could be yanked uh, really. Um, Did you say Thursday? Thursday the 10th. There's no such thing as Thursday the 10th. September 10th. September. We're oh, okay. in September. I, so, I'm sorry if I didn't say that, but uh, yeah. Okay, September. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So that's okay. And then the final was the Monday, the 28th. It's, it's a, it's the 20, it's a Monday instead of the usual Tuesday. We don't have a, um, a, a, like a school board issue on the 22nd, which would have been our usual day. But the, the problem is that the final budget hearing advertisement has to run two to five days before the hearing. The ad has to run two to five days before. And our official paper of record is Lake Okeechobee News, which publishes on a Wednesday. So we'd have to hold it between a Friday and a Monday. Tuesday is six days later, and it's too late. Okay. So that's the reason both of those meetings are getting bumped. Okay. And so the trim notice that you will that you're voting you're voting on the rate tonight, but you're also 
where I informed the property appraiser, the date which goes on the trim notice for the tentative hearing is printed on the trim, so it would be Thursday the 10th, September 10th. Okay. In Clewiston. Have a, a time already been set? 5.30. Mm -hmm. Both of them 5.30? Yes. Okay. So we got a we, motion? Mr. Yes. Uh, I, I anticipate the fact conference is going to get canceled with what's happening. Uh, just, you know, that was a little bit of a discrepancy. I didn't, but I didn't know if any of y'all were anticipating attending that. That was the 9th and the 10th. Yeah, I have Coming a back on the 11th. But, uh, Obviously, I mean, it's, it's in West Palm, so it would be an hour and a half away. It wouldn't be bad. And um, we were planning to start at 5.30. Normally, we start the regular meeting at 5, budget hearing at 5.30. We were aware of what you're talking about, and so we were thinking we'll just begin the whole meeting at 5.30 okay. with the budget, yes. and then regular would follow. Great. So then, so then the day's over, so we could shoot from the yeah. conference and get yeah. here. Perfect. Yeah. Thank and you it's more. in Clewiston, so yeah, it right. makes it a yeah. little yeah. easier. Highly likely that thing's going to get canceled anyway. Okay. So... Um, is there any discussion from the phone? Okay, now, any further discussion on the board? Uh, All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Would you announce those dates to you, just so everybody does hear that? So it's September? The 10th. September 10th at 5? 5, 5.30 in Clewiston. Okay. And then September 28th at 5.30 here in LaBelle And those Chambers. will be the, the budget hearings? Yes, sir. I Thank did you. have one walk-on item um, <laughs> to do with the CARES. This is the um, additional housing dollars that I've been referencing uh, that we just got the um, information since the budget packets went out. Uh, you have it before you in the, in the amount of $240,758. So I'm asking for you all to approve this agreement and authorize the chairman to execute with um, review of the approval so of the moved. county attorney. Motion by Commissioner Harris. Do we have a second? Second. Second by Commissioner Bird. Any discussion on the board? Anyone from the phone? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Lapp. Yes, Mr. Chairman, members of the board. Uh, this is regarding the off-highway vehicle issue that arose during the Pioneer meeting. And so uh, at the February 11th meeting, you authorized me to seek a formal attorney general opinion. We're seeking input from her office, uh, interpreting the statutes about our authority to regulate uh, off-highway vehicles. Uh, there's you know multiple kinds of those vehicles. I think the two main ones that we're talking about here are ATVs, all-terrain vehicles. Those are defined in the statute with a certain size as far as inches and weight. Um, then there's the ROVs, recreational off-highway vehicles that are bigger. Uh, they typically have a back seat or often have a back seat, maybe have a roof, a little bit more extensive. Those are more inches and heavier. And so, um, and then there's golf carts, but you've already dealt with golf carts, you're allowing those and that's moving forward already. So. With the uh, ATVs, uh, state law says uh, that those can be operated um, on unpaved roadways with a speed limit less than 35 miles an hour uh, by a licensed driver or somebody under the supervision of a licensed driver. Uh, so that's allowed under state law, but counties can um, opt out of that allowance and thus prohibit the off-highway, or excuse me, the um, ATVs. And this county did that in 2007 and so right now the ATVs are not allowed um, you could pick and choose roads so in other words you could say these roads yes those roads no and that's something you haven't done but you could uh, but as far as this idea of having a licensing regime a registration regime where you know you got to get a permit to even operate one of them that was one of my questions and the Attorney General said no it's 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 state law is um, preempts us from being able to do that and so that's for ATVs. For ROVs, the bigger vehicles, uh, they, she concluded that those are not allowed on public roadways. They're just not allowed. It, state law prohibits it. They're off-highway vehicles, and there's no special allowance like there is for ATVs. There's just nothing. It's just they're not, they're not allowed. They're supposed they're to be not allowed. allowed. They're supposed to be on uh, off-highway off use. So 
the bottom line is I don't think we have any further authority to do anything on this unless you wanted to revisit the ATV issue and decide to allow it on some roads, not allow it on others. But it couldn't be, it'd be the roads that it's allowed on, it's not the user. You couldn't say all the Pioneer people can drive on it, but if you're from out of town, you can't. I mean, that's just not, that's not an allowed uh, regulation. So this uh, is- One of the biggest problems off-road um, in Wheeler Estates right now, the gentleman was out here grading last week, and the day after he graded the road, they were torn back up. People out here doing donuts in the middle of the road. And I get it. It made. It, I mean, I've played on my entire life and probably tore up ditches and roadways and everything else too. But uh, we, we got. And the problem is, you know, in speaking with the sheriff, the problem for him is getting the deputy out there. They got to go all the way around to get there. So by the time they get there, obviously everyone is gone. But we got to find a way to to protect our citizens and where they have to get in and out. And I'm not really complaining about the ORVs. I have one. But I ride it either on my property or I ride it on a property where I'm permitted to ride it. Um, my granddaughters drive it, so I'm not worried about the age. But we do got to figure out a way to not destroy in public property, because right now that's the issue and where I'm at. I don't know how, what's going on with you guys, and I'll leave it there. So, Mr. Chair, in Pioneer, um, we have a, a large contingency that, that comes out from out of town on the weekends uh, and then all of our major holidays uh, and they they utilize Hendry County as a giant playground because they're in the middle of nowhere in their mind's eye and uh, unfortunately we have a, a, a fairly large local group that uh, is extremely responsible to riding their four-wheelers and their their OHVs uh, and golf carts and you know, they're feeling the brunt of this uh, problem that we have from an outside influence. And then we have a hybrid of people that live here that invite their friends in, and their friends act kind of uh, silly or ridiculous or asinine, whichever one you want to put on it. You can be as aggressive as you'd like on any of them. Um, COVID came up, so I wasn't able to have as many community meetings as I would have liked to have had in Pioneer to discuss this with the con uh, constituency. Uh, in my mind's eye, uh, I know there was a couple groups that got together, and, and I think where they were settling was the, the roads that are, if you will, Shane, that are grass roads in Pioneer now. They were kind of, you know, vetting. What if we open those up to people being allowed to ride their four-wheelers? Um, and then, and then, you know, having a good discussion, a good-hearted discussion about that. Uh, Mr. Chair, one thing I'd like to ask Mark is, um, so the state, the state says you can't drive an OHV just anywhere unless it's private land. But my question is, is uh, I think a, kind of a get out of jail free card that I've, I've heard about is you can take an OHV and make it street legal pretty easily. So I don't know what the, what, what the rule is for, uh, I'm just gonna use this as an example. Obviously, we turn a blind eye on like Sugar Festival weekend, or we turn a blind eye on Swamp Cabbage, right? Everybody's got their OHVs everywhere, and that's the way we should do it. But is there like an inspection process that they could bring their OHV to to the county or to the sheriff's department, or have an area that's designated, and they could say, yes, you have a horn, you have blinkers, you have tail lights, you have headlights. That that would make it street legal. Not much different than what I think we've done with the golf carts there before allowing that that OHV to be driven all the way up to the Pioneer Shell Station, you know, on on uh, Henry Isles. Okay, well, the OHV is a general term that includes ATVs RO, and ROVs. So okay. is that, I don't know if I'm you're sorry, talking, I meant ROV, ROVs. All, all those things that I just said. Okay, so <laughs> ROVs. Um, I'm not aware of any process that can make them street legal. Maybe there is. Uh, they would have to be licensed. I mean, like, I'll have a tag. Yes, you sir. Know? And, and so, but as far as that wasn't really, I didn't look into what, what they would have to do to make them street legal. Um, but as they are sold, you know, and marketed, they're not street legal as is. But do you, I'm, I'm not, are you certain of that? Like you're, like in, like, let's say Cape Coral, I don't know, I'm using it as an example. But the villages is a great example where I know they're golf cart friendly, right? You can take your golf cart. But I want to say in my mind's eye, they all have a, an actual tag on them, you know, in the villages. Now, I may be completely butchering that. They may not. But 
I'm just wondering if you can buy your ROV from Polaris or the Honda store and this kit makes it to where it has beep beep, lights, this, that, and the other, and, and it makes it street legal. Well, then it wouldn't be an it, it wouldn't be a, an ROV or an off-highway vehicle anymore. It'd be a, a hybrid. motor vehicle or, it's you know, a, vehicle. and I don't know, you know, yeah. and, and I, as far as what... You know, what declares it, I don't know if it's a 48-inch wheelbase or, you know, yeah. I don't have a clue. And I just, I, I'd like for that question to be posed because I think, I think it's a caveat that you'll see. Because when you're in, when you're in Kendall, you know, when you're in Miami-Dade and you're on, you're on 88th and Chrome and you see six ROVs, is it ROVs, come down Chrome Avenue. You know, they come down 88th, they make a hard left and head south down Kendall, and they're driving right down the sidewalk. And a Miami-Dade police officer passes them and doesn't even think about hitting a U-turn or anything. Makes my wheels go, well, maybe they don't, you know. Are they saying they got bigger fish to fry or are they saying they don't care? Slap right back around and go up an hour north of Tampa to Hernando County, uh, which is which is Hendry County with a beach, okay, uh, and a few cooler places to eat at. And, you know, I'm riding my track bicycle down the sidewalk and... I just call them a Polaris. They're all a Polaris to me, but a, a, a Polaris, you know, runs me off of the sidewalk. Not meanly, they just didn't see me. And ironically enough, there were there was a Pasco County and a Hernando County deputy talking to each other. They saw it all go down at the racetrack. We all waved to each other, and everybody was cooling the gang. And I thought, huh, it's everywhere, you know. And so I don't know, you know, I don't know. Are those? Do they have? And I didn't see a license. I didn't see a tag on, on the one in Pasco, Hernando, by the way. But I was literally on the the line there. The point I'm making is is that. I could see, and I know that they're all golf carts of sort that are street legal, um, and I could see someone from Miami-Dade or Broward coming up with four or five of these things that are, you know, I don't know if you're aware of this, Mark, but they got Polaris's that cost twenty-five, thirty thousand dollars $30,000 easily or more. And, um, and you know, I, I, I bet they're close to street legal if they're not. Yeah, and right. it, now it gets into how are you, how are you, you know, it's just another can of worms. It's aggravating. And I'm just wanting to, I'm wanting to be able to present that information, Mark, as best we can. You know, I and think, obviously this isn't a race. This is a marathon to us trying to find some, some you know, yeah. happy medium for all of us to be. The only thing they don't have is turn signals. Yeah. They have everything else. Yeah. You buy with all the bells and whistles, it has extra lights. The only thing it doesn't have is, is a turn signal. Yeah. It might be the kind of discussion with the tax collector's office because they issue the auto tags. I mean, they're, they're going to have to have a tag yes, to sir. be street legal. Yes, sir. And so, um, I don't know, they probably have, I'm sure they have standards in their office as far as if you ask for a tag for something, you have to show them something to, yes, get, to get that. Yes, sir. So I could ask them that question. Okay. Well, and then, and then Mark, what I did hear you say, though, was that a... A four-wheeler by definition, an ATV, all-terrain vehicle, the county opted out in 2007 so that we took the state's standard and said you can't operate, no? no the state standard was you can you operate can. them, Okay. and we opted out to gotcha. say we don't want those operating. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mark, could you could you get those notes and allow us to review that? I'd love, I'd love to get that. Like the mini minutes of yes, the sir. board meeting? Yes, sure. sir. Yeah. I'd love to see that. Yeah. I looked it up once, but I'd like to refresh myself with that because, uh, you know, obviously Sheriff Lee was was that was that was Ronnie Lee's yeah. coming in on his last, final term there, and I'd love to hear what their thoughts were on why we why we did what we did, and when you do that, Mark, you can't you can't declare Felda can say yes and Pioneer can say well, no, no or vice versa, can you? Well, I think you, you you as the board can designate roads that are in and out. Okay, and, and so. And name them. You okay. know, these are in, these are out. But okay. it, so I think you can do that. It's just you can't say if a road's open, only certain people can ride on it. That's the part that's not appropriate. Yes, sir. Yeah. yeah. You can't say a Henry County resident and a Glades yeah. County resident can ride. Yeah. But if you're from anywhere else on God's creation, yeah. nope. Yeah. Okay. Right. So if it's street legal, does the speed limit matter? Sure. Mm -hmm. So it still had to be on the 20, 35 miles, 25 miles? Well, miles? Yeah, if, well, for ATVs, it has to be under 35. And they don't have to be street legal. They can just be a regular ATV and, and, and ride. What Commissioner Turner's talking about is making an ROV street legal. And if it's street legal, then I guess they operate under the same thing cars do. Yes, sir. I would, I would think so. Okay. Yeah. And obviously, y'all, I'm not trying to belabor the point. I just want to know because, no. 
You know, and, and, and the question's crazy. gonna come. They're gonna ask. Yes, ma'am. And like, I don't want to throw anybody under the bus, Shane, but it <laughs> cracked me up the other day. Uh, I think it's one of your employees. It made me happy. It made me so happy. But I was riding my bicycle on Hooker's Point Road, and I'm pretty sure it was a road bridge employee, but it may have been a South Florida Water Management District employee. But he come rolling by with his radio on and Polaris. And I was like, he's saving money. You know, his gas bill is a little bit lighter in this thing. But I thought, I wonder if he can get a ticket. You know, but and I don't know. I don't know if he was. my guy. Ah, <laughs> no, Shane. <laughs> so, but, uh, but, you know, I haven't seen that in Hooker's Point in quite some time. Now, you see a lot of four-wheeler uh, madness going on, but, but that's it. So. Okay, so we, we're, uh, we're, we don't have any action on this, do we? Right. No, I'll, I'll check into the couple things that we talked about. If you could, please, and then, and then uh, if we can report back on that, the, the next meeting of the bill, I'd love to have that information. Mm -hmm. uh, and then before we leave this, I'd like to ask you all, are y'all doing, it's not prudent to have a community meeting just yet, is it? It's, it's, mm -hmm. it's yeah, asinine yeah. to do that as well, right? We need to get the guidelines yeah. so we know exactly what we're talking about once we walk in there with them. But I mean, we don't. Y'all aren't having any kind of a community discussion whatsoever because of just the the concept of. I am gonna. I'm gonna a do a car. I'm gonna do a car. I'm gonna do a car community meeting once I sit with Jennifer for the Care Act. Okay. I'm gonna do a car community meeting because some people just not gonna get it. Where are you mm -hmm. contemplating holding that at, Ms. Bird? Right there in the parking lot at Civic Center. Okay. I have a hand mic. Yep. I got a Bluetooth. Yep. And that's what I'm going with. I like. It. I like. It. Have y'all done anything, Ms. Davis? Have y'all had any kind of community meetings or anything? No. Okay, well, it's going to bring us to you, Ms. Simblage. Again, good evening, Commissioners. Margaret Emblage, for the record. Um, this agenda item is um, regarding a, a settlement agreement with Freeside Poly, Inc. Um, as you all know, uh, Recite Poly is located on State Road 80, West State Road 80, and um, in 2014 uh, they were approved for a site development plan to establish a recycling facility for primarily agricultural uh, plastic. Um, however, since um, that approval and them establishing um, their business, uh, the piles that they originally um, set up um, have not moved, and it has become, you know, an issue with uh, the county and um, the community. And um, that said, we've been trying to work with them over the last few years, and uh, we got to a point on uh, December 9th where we issued a notice of violation asserting that the uh, presence of the piles of agricultural plastic for over four years without processing and allowing loose material to blow off site made the subject property a public nuisance, um, which is contrary to our land development regulations. The case was scheduled for a hearing before the special magistrate on January 16th, uh, but was subsequently continued to allow the parties to attempt to reach an amicable um, resolution. Um, We've attached a, a, an agreement that um, staff and um, Recite Poly and their representative, um, representatives um, have worked through. Um, we've come to an agreement on all points except for one. And um, if you would like, I can go through just the point that uh, we are in disagreement on, or if you'd like me to go through. Just go through the one. Okay. One they disagree. One that we disagree on. Okay. Okay. All right. So the one that we uh, disagree on has to do with um, on your uh, on the staff report um, on on uh, page three, uh, number four, item number four. Um, it states that within and we've left the number of years uh, blank at this point, uh, but staff is recommending two years. So within two years from our recommendation of the date of the agreement, Recite Poly shall recycle all piles of agricultural plastic currently in place on the subject property or lawfully dispose of the material off-site. Thereafter, piles of agricultural plastic on the subject property shall be recycled 
on an ongoing basis. After the existing piles are removed, no agricultural plastic placed on the subject property shall remain in the same location for longer than one year. The um, Recite Poly um, representatives would like to have five years from the agreement um, date uh, to be able to accomplish what I just read. Say, Margaret, have yes. you? I've never seen any plastic recycled out there. Never. There has been some, and I'll let the um, the representatives from so Recycle what I can't speak understand, to that. Uh, it's 2020, and the piles look the same all the time. They make no effort to do anything out there. And why would you give somebody five years when they hadn't done anything in, since 2014? I mean, they're not going to do anything in five years or two years. They're, they're just buying time. And we're tired of looking at it. Or I am. I don't know about anybody else. Hey, we got a uh, representative coming up behind you. Is, um, I got two here. Are you Seth? I'm Seth. Hey, yes, sir. Seth, would okay. you like to come up and... Thank you. I thank you for your time, and I, I understand your concern. Um, uh, so, so I'll take a few minutes here, and I, I want to go over a few details. And uh, I've not been before this board before, so I want to take one second to introduce myself. My name is Seth Bain. I'm a proud graduate of Clewiston High School. I want to make a full disclosure. I ran track with Commissioner Carson's brother. He was much faster than I was, uh, but we'll leave that aside for now. Um, I. Uh, Thank you for being, allowing me to be here. I'm a certified planner like Ms. Emblidge. Uh, I am an attorney. Uh, after working uh, as a planner at a law firm, I realized they were never giving me a raise unless I got a law degree. So I burned all my free time for a number of years. Uh, I thank you for the opportunity to be here. Um, my clients have been before you before, because as Ms. Emblidge explained, they came here for a site plan approval back in 2014. Uh, my clients, Resci, Poly, uh, have been in the recycling business for a long time. They were looking for an opportunity to uh, expand their business, to find a new opportunity, and, and frankly, to do some good in the process. They came upon the uh, agricultural film. Uh, this material is routinely, it's only used once in vast quantities, and then only two things happen to it. It's either buried or it's burned. Uh, they heard that it's difficult to recycle because of the amount of dirt in it, and so they spent a, over a year researching this material, gathering it, talking to experts, talking to experts around the world that had equipment that could handle this material. Um, after extensive review, they figured out that they, they believed they could do it, and so they began their investment into that process and into this county. Uh, they got in contact with Mr. Barry. He had an industrial property. Uh, he uh, in, initially they agreed to a lease and came before you for a site plan approval. And as they said, that site plan approval was back in 2014. It approved the recycling use and approved locations for storing plastic on the site. Approved site plan, regulated how high those piles could be, regulated the landscaping that could be around it. Uh, they began the effort um, shortly thereafter, after putting in the power lines and buying all the equipment and rehabbing the property and putting in the landscaping. While they're doing that, this material was started to be delivered by your local agricultural farmers. They could take it off their hands. The farmers were happy to get rid of it and we would take it for free off them so they didn't have to pay to get rid of it. So it was a benefit to the farmers as well. That was the goal. When they tried to ramp up full-scale operation, they ran into trouble. The reality was the sand in there, just like it grinds up the cutters that chop up the sugar cane out there, it was grinding up their recycling equipment. And despite their washing, you know, there's two, they had a whole new developed system for washing the material to get the sand off it, bring it into the warehouse, where all that equipment's still in there, still operational, still functional, and has in fact operated quite a bit, just not that material that's sitting out front. The operation exists, it started to run, um, and the reality is that the material proved to be unrecyclable based on that system they had today. Now, I, I hear you, Ms. Commissioner Harris, you're tired of looking at it. No one's tired, more tired of looking at it than our clients, because that's a lost cost. The money they put into that property the money they've invested, all that material sitting there, perfect plastic feedstock ready to go. And they've been searching high and low, working with experts to try to figure out how to resolve that issue. The reality is they continue to fight to resolve that issue. 
They continue to research processes, and they're currently involved. They've got investors on the line right now. The point that they need to do is they need to invest yet more money into that equipment they have there to repair the damage that had been done in the, in the few years of operation that they ran it. Um, when they're able to do that, they're going to re be able to restart their recycling operation and using both materials that are being brought in off the site and as they develop the system to wash what's there to continue to process what's on there. Now you heard, you, to your point, and as Ms. Emlich said, we have a large agreement here. You said let's jump to the point where there's some disagreement and I will certainly get to that. But I think it's important to note that there, when this all started, two things occurred. One was DEP called up and said, somebody called us and said, there's some contamination issues on your site, we'd like to come out and take a look. The EP came out, they reviewed the whole site, inside and outside, and they said, there's no problem here. And that's how my firm actually got involved, because we're, amongst other things, environmental attorneys. Uh, then we received the code enforcement violation. That violation did say, as Ms. Emerson mentioned, that some of that plastic was migrating off the site. To the extent that that's true, that's a nuisance, we understand that, and we need to fix it. And in fact, one of the conditions also, there's a pile of plastic behind one of the buildings that turns out to cross the property line that needs to go as well, the dumpster's already on site, we're getting it off there. We've agreed to a handful of things in this agreement, and I want to go through them now. Again, I know you want to get to the, the punchline, but I, it's important to talk about these things. So one is, A, remove that plastic from the adjacent properties, which the, the wind blown stuff we've already cleaned up, and they've required us to get a netting system over that plastic. Now that plastic's a giant, the masses that are out there, they don't blow around as a whole, but nevertheless, we're going to net them so that some of this stuff's not blowing off the site. Because we recognize that if that plastic moves off the site, that is a nuisance. That's a problem. We understand that. We're going to take care of it. Next thing, your staff came out to our site, and we looked about, talked about the visibility issue. Staff walked the property, drove in front of it, and came up with a list of requests. First request is they want those piles reduced to 12 feet, lower than a single story home, for the first 300 feet back, for as long as a football field. And if you've been by that site in the last couple weeks, you'll see that work's already begun. There's an excavator on the site. We've got somebody on there. They're dragging the top of those piles off. They're doing what they need to do to cut it and drag it back. They're done, they've already done about the first 100 feet. And if you drive by there, you'll notice that there's a noticeable uh, change there, and it's going to go back for another 200 feet back from that. Staff also said, they are, even though we've got this vegetation in the front, the full width of our property, when you drive from the north or the south, you can see behind that vegetation. So staff has asked us to put up another 300 feet of fencing, 50 yards on either side approximately, 8 feet high, opaque, screened on either side. So when you're driving up and down that road, you're going to see this black or dark green fencing, I'm not sure which color it's supposed to be, um, along there. So between that fencing, the reduced pile height, and the existing landscaping, that we've done a, going to do a whole lot to make it look a whole lot better, you're not going to see much of anything back there. And we understand that. And we understand that because we are part of this community. They've invested in this property. They intend to be there for a long time. It started as a lease from Mr. Barry. Was a, ended up being a purchase. They, they realized they were committed to this site. Um, finally, when staff came out there to visit, they said, this road, this access road across the uh, Barry Henke mm -hmm. property is not, is not up to standard. We need you to improve this road. That road was supposed to be done when Mr. Barry got his original PUD approval, industrial plan development approval out here. Yeah, that was never taken care of, and they said, we need you to go to Hen K and say that you need to improve this road, gravel it, make sure safety, fire, fire rescue, emergency for service vehicles can get across this access road in the front. We agreed, we're going to do everything we can to do, we're going to, we have an easement over it, so there's no reason Hen K wouldn't want us to go in there and improve a road on his property, so we've agreed to go in there and make those improvements on his road. All of this takes money. All of this takes increased investment. Getting the equipment in there, and I invite you to go in there and see the work that's been done and see the process and see the pelletized material that's in that, that warehouse. And you'll see that it, there has been a lot of work that goes there. They need more money. They need an additional investment to get these improvements done, and they're committed to doing it. Because it does mean jobs. We get that recycling facility up and running again. Full capacity, that's 25 jobs in that, in that plant when it's up and running at full site. And that's what they want to do. The reality is, is that We've worked all of this out with staff. We've addressed these issues, these visibility issues, these materials off-site issues, these safety access issues. The last number they've come to is, 
and we want you to turn over the material that's on there and turn over the material that's on there faster. We understand that. We cannot tell you today, guarantee that we're going to get through that material in two years. We just can't. We've got to fix our equipment. We've got to get it running again. We're going to start bringing in plastics that are easy to recycle some, some from the grocery stores, from other sites. China doesn't take recycling material anymore, so people, th th there's a desperate need for somebody doing plastics recycling in this nation. We're willing to do, be the local guy to do it. That agricultural stuff's a hard nut to crack, but it has value. We've got it there. It's feedstock for our property. We're going to do everything we can to make it look better. You know, our guys have said, you know, we, we, we wish there was no time frame. There was no time frame when we got the approval, and if we had a time frame when we first came in six years ago, we, 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 we per, perhaps would have paused at that time. Staff wants a time frame. My guys were begging for 10 years, um, and uh, you know, it seemed like that, that was a non-starter for staff. I'm asking you for five. Five years is realistic. We need to get the investment. We need to convince our investors and get them sort of not worried that we won't be back here in two years under another code enforcement issue because if we, if we promise two years and we can't deliver, that's the fear that we have, and our investors can't stomach that. We're asking for five years. We're going to make all these improvements. We're going to improve the way it looks. We're going to protect, protect the neighbors. We're going to continue to invest in this. We're going to generate jobs. We're asking you to consider giving us five years. That's what our investors asked us for. It's not a number out of the sky, and we're going to do everything in our power to move that plastic. Nobody wants it to be gone more than us. That's lost cost for us. We, we understand that. And so we're going to make this investment and try to improve the community. We're part of it. We would beg of you that you would, would uh, consider a five-year for the process. Thank you. Yeah, before, you uh, before you leave, now I've been on the board four years. This is my fourth year going. And this is a process that I've been engaged for four years, personally. I've been on site, and I have met with them. And I have heard these same things for four years. Mm -hmm. So I can tell you, I'm like Mr. Harris, we, we really need to see something happen. Uh, you say it's happening now. I've driven by there a couple days. I haven't really noticed. I will be driving there tomorrow just to look. Mm -hmm. I'm going to go look just tomorrow to put eyes on it. I personally picked up stuff out of a man's pasture across the road, took it back to the site, and was told that's not our material, personally. It was your material. Obviously, it's, I mean, I'm not a scientist and I can't put it on the microscope, but it's your yeah. material. So this, this is a situation that really needs to get completed. And everything you're saying, I've heard for four years. And I know I haven't heard it from you, but I've heard it directly. Right. So I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat as Mr. Harris. Let's, let's put some action to this. So uh, I'm just kind of curious to see what the rest of the board has to say about it. Mr. Chair, yes, I, was, I was writing down everything that he was saying, the amount they want them to remove it. They want to net over. They want it less than 12 feet. They want to put a fence around. They want to repair the road. But the biggest thing they want is to be done faster than what you're doing it. And I'm looking at you been there for six years. I'm like him. I've been on the board for four years. I, I think that five years is too long. I think you need to concentrate on putting the fence around it, first of all, because it's a sore eye. Then you need to level off what you have. And I, I just don't think five years is, is, is too, I think five years is too long. Um, for that to happen. It doesn't take that long to put a fence around. I know you're talking about finance, but you're not even recycling, so how are you going to get the funds? Uh, and, and, ma'am, and all those changes, we're talking about the fencing, the reducing the heights, that, that, that starts immediately. That starts within three months. Like I said, we've already begun that work on the property. We've already begun reducing those pile heights on there, the excavators on site. Um, we've got the guys scheduled. So that work, the fence, um, you know, the, the improvements of the road, all of that needs to happen immediately. Well, it shouldn't take five years to, I, I would suggest the fence. I would suggest the, uh, the leveling of the, the 12 feet of the plastic, and, um, and then they can go from there. But I think they need to see something now because it's a sore. I wouldn't give you five years. I'll say do that and bring it back. And that's kind of, Ms. Murray, I agree with that. What I would say is I'd, I'd love to see you again in two years. <laughs> Come back and see us and say, hey, you know, we, we've held up our bargain. This is what we got done in two years. Could you extend this, the, the extra three years? At that point, we're going to say, well, you know, you come there two years ago and, and you said you was going to do X, Y, and Z, and we really haven't seen that yet. So I'm, I'm kind of in the same boat. I mean, there's a lot that can be done, and, and it, it does take money. But reality is, I mean, you're going to process materials that you can process that you don't have to clean. I mean, that, that's, that makes perfect sense to me. 
if I'm in your business, I'm going to do the same thing. Yeah. So, so, and I get it, and I understand that. But again, you know, it's been six years, so I would say, hey, you know what? I'm on board. Give you two years, and then two years come back and say, hey, you know, we have made a we made a conscious effort. We got the fence in right away. Everything we told you we were going to do, we did. And at that point, I can say, hey, you know, you have. You've been a you've been a model. You know, step up here. It's been amazing. We can go ahead and, and go from there. But that, that's kind of what I would suggest. And, uh, uh, anyway, if I'd like to look at it in three months. And and uh, I might vote different in three months. And that's that's sort of the conundrum we have here is that you know we are commissioner we are looking for outside investment to make these changes to make these improvements to bring the project forward. No. Uh, we simply can't do it on our own, and and it's those investors like any investor wants to minimize his risk, and uh, and that's the challenge that, that that we have right now is that. But didn't you say three months you'd have the fence up? and level to 12 feet and stuff like that it, yes sir we can agree to that if if it's understood that you know that we can process that material over the course of five years that if our investor has told us that if we can guarantee that that we're not going to be under a code enforcement action or under some major change in two years from now they're willing to help us get that work done we cannot get it done without their assistance and they have told us five years so, this is just going to uh, Seth, or uh, John. Pilot. So this is John. Come on up, sir. I, I, what, I didn't attempt y'all's last name. I didn't want to mess him up, so I apologize. If you would just state your name. For, for Good record, evening, please, John sir. Skolnick. I'm the CEO of Retail Poly. <clears throat> I, I would like to say a couple of things uh, in regards to everything that has been said. Mm -hmm. uh, we've been there since 2014. Um, when we began this project, from that moment until today, we have recycled plenty of material. If you would have seen those mountains when we began, uh, the mountains were completely from front to the back. This material is picked up by the farmers only once or twice a year, because the farmers use the material after the crop, they remove the material, Today they're burning it or they're landfilling it. <clears throat> we decided to try to find a solution to recycle it. Um, in uh, difference from another situation that you had here in LaBelle, we didn't ask for any money from anybody. We invested our own money. So having the piles of plastic over there, it's money that we have sunk into the project and to make it work. The reasoning behind the five years. First of all, if you read the agreement, which um, there are certain things in that agreement that we are doing, not because we want to, but because we think that it's the only way that we can reach an agreement with the county. <clears throat> there are certain things in that agreement that absolutely has nothing to do with the plastic. It has nothing to do with some pieces of plastic that have flown away. And we have done several things to take care of that. Um, <clears throat> during the years, we double the amount of buffer landscaping that we had in. The county came in, requested more buffering, and we did agree with it, and we did it. Um, the reasoning behind the five years, so you understand that it's not a just a number thrown out there. <clears throat> The equipment that we have was almost completely destroyed by the silt and the sand that this material has. So we need to find another process to pre-sort and pre-wash this material before entering the facility. That's one route that we're taking. The other route that we're taking is transforming this material to some type of fuel. Um, it's been proven. We've already done the testing on site with equipment, and we've been able to convert this material into some type of diesel or some type of fuel that can be sold to big corporations. Now, <clears throat> we don't have the equipment that we need to do that. Now, when we start the process again, what we're trying to do, we've been red for the last six years. Um, I appreciate very much the work that I've gone through with uh, uh, the Department of Taxes of the county. Uh, they have seen all our tax returns and our financials. They are very well aware 
of the millions of dollars that we've lost during these four or five years, and they've helped us tremendously, and we appreciate that very much. <clears throat> it's going to take us one or two years to really get the equipment that we'll be able to, to process that material. When you say that we have two years, and we're going to take between one to one and a half years to finalize finding the equipment, purchasing the equipment to start recycling the agricultural film, there are over 20,000 tons of material on that site. So 20,000 tons is going to take us years to process. We haven't received any agricultural film for the last 20, I think it's 28 or 29 months. We started recycling some material from entities like Publix and Walmart, which has become very effective. But as soon as we started, we didn't have any more money. So we spent a year, almost a year and a half, trying to look for an investor that comes in and invest with us to make this uh, process feasible and cost effective and God willing, recoup some of the money in the future. <clears throat> Once the equipment is up and running and we start recycling the agricultural film, the reason for those two, three or four years, it's not because we just want to do it. It's because that's the time that it's going to take for us to process <clears throat> the amount of material that we have there. So that is the reason for the five years. To tell you the truth, when we started talking to our attorneys, we said, please explain to us, how is it possible that we have a site plan approved? Clearly, we have done everything, everything up to every request that we've received from the county. You said yourself that you've been there and you picked up some material and that you've been on site and that you, I and that you um, unfortunately, I haven't seen you. I would have loved to see you there. No. Um, the process is very complicated. If you see the amount of material, uh, equipment that we have on site, and the structures that we've had to build to be able to do this, <clears throat> when we went for that site plan approval, it was given to us without any limit. If you see the site approval that we have, under the law, approved by the county, doesn't say you have two years to have the material there. You have 10 years to have the material there. You have 20 years to have the material there. It has absolutely no time. And our position has always been with the people that we've dealt with in the county, that we have always done everything that we've been requested to do, except things that are modifying the site plan that we already had. It is not the county's fault, nor our fault, that the equipment that we purchased didn't perform as it was supposed to be performed. The equipment comes from Europe, two different areas in Europe. They do recycle this material. Fortunately for them, and I'm not gonna say unfortunately, but for us, the only thing that they did not take into consideration, even though before starting the process, we shipped two tons of material to Germany, the silt and the sand from our state, it is extremely corrosive and extremely damaged to all the equipment that it's a metal equipment. And that was the process that destroyed the equipment that we purchased. We're in the process of finding solutions. Our expectations are that with this investor, that is waiting for basically this meeting to finalize their decision if they're coming in or not. Because if I was an investor, I'm not going to go into a county that it's against me at the beginning. Um, to find a resolution on this situation, um, the agreement that we have states, I believe, that within 180 days we have to do some things. Within the next three months we have to do things. So the fence, the netting, the lowering of the piles and uh, the improvement of the road, even though we don't need that road, because as we've shown the county, there is a road on the back that we have easements for any emergency vehicles to reach exactly our facility. The road that we're requesting to do is the front to reach the offices. So if you want to reach the, the warehouse, it's perfectly accessible through a road that it's already there. So 
sorry for taking so much of your time, but I wanted to explain that it's not, we don't make money when we have the plastic there. Mm -hmm. uh, and we're still here. Uh, we've been literally bankrupt for the last almost two years, and we're still working on trying to resolve this and not going to bankruptcy. That is the reason for the five years. We would have want no limit because as we stated in every meeting that we've had with the county representatives, if the system works, our intention is to bring more material so we can recycle the material and we can then make money and have more people working there and God willing, everything is going to work properly. We have not been able to do so. That's what we're asking for this time limit that we even don't agree, but it's the only way that we'll be able to find a resolution so that the investor can come in and we can move forward. I appreciate your time. I don't know if you have any questions. I have time. Go ahead. Uh, are you pelletizing any material out there today? No. When was the last time you did that? In uh, November of last year. November of last year. And, and with what's happened in the world with the recycling, you know, industry, is there a glut in the United States of America for this material mm -hmm. or is there a lack of it? Are we talking about agricultural film or plastic films? Plastic film. Plastic films today in the United States, this is a public hearing, so sometimes I have to take care, I take, be careful with the things that I say. But they, believe it or not, that material is going to the landfill today. There are no manufacturing facilities, enough manufacturing facilities in the United States to be able to recycle this material. There's All not, of this material- There's not enough facilities or there, there are no facilities? There are not enough facilities. There are very few facilities like ours. Literally, there is a company in Arkansas. The name of them is Delta Plastics and they're doing some recycling. And there's a company in California that it's called Encore. Those are the three companies that are working with agricultural film. Other films that have a little bit of contamination, that they need the wash as we have it. Um, that material is all going to China to, um, to different areas of Asia, and they all close their doors since, sorry, since uh, December, if I'm not mistaken, December 2017. So all of that material is not being recycled. And believe it or not, that is the reason that we are going to be able to take this company out of bankruptcy. Because since that material is not any longer going to go to all of these countries, there is nowhere to go right now. So it's being landfilled. That material was being purchased to be recycled for a quarter a pound, and today, it's less than two or three cents a pound, just because people don't have a place to take it so that material can be recycled. Even though we have a state law that requires that by this year, we should be recycling 75% of everything that we throw away. And that number today is less than 20%. Um, we're not here to make us feel great that we're, but we really were looking to do something good because that's the background that we come from in the recycling world. So we tried to do this and it didn't, it hasn't worked as we expected and we hope that it will. Are you still accepting uh, plastics? We, we stop accepting agricultural film since September of 2017 or 2018. Since the September of 2018, we stopped accepting that material. I encourage any of you to come to the facility. Just let us know when. We'll show you what we've done. We'll show you the process. <clears throat> we are going to have those few things that are an eyesore, uh, God willing, in the next I believe three, less than three or four months, once the investor comes in, because we are really struggling. Um, 
So that's that's why we came here today. It's Mr. Skolnick, is that correct? That is correct. So so you're you're not pelletizing today. When you guys are up on online and running, it's a potential of 25 jobs out there. When we are completely full up and running, 24/6, yes. Okay. Good news, you have no DEP violations that 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 they could find, correct? Absolutely not. You are locking into a three-month, is it 90 or 120-day time frame yes, that you're going to that you're going to. There are there are dates that we negotiated with the county. Yep. That specifically states within 180 days is the road. Yep. I believe 30 days is the removal of a piece of plastic that we left there when we stopped processing. We don't, we don't have the ability, I'm not to cut you off, sir, one second. We don't have the ability to pull that final picture up here, do we? No? No. No, okay. No. I'm going to ask it again, Jennifer. Mm -hmm. When we have a presentation like this, I would love for us to be able to look at that so that we can all talk to it, and, and then anybody that wants to see it, they can be able to see it as well. That's not all us. It's just something I've been asking for. Mm -hmm. so, so on the red line, Ms. Imblage and Mr. Skolnick, there's a 125-foot red line and 165-foot. The 165-foot is on the east end. Correct. The 125-foot is on the west end. Yeah. That's going to be a buffer, a fence, uh, a, a fence that has wind shielding on it. What is it? It's an 8-foot, 100% opaque fence. Okay. Right. And it's just going to run that length, correct? That's the, the portion that you see yep. with a view if you're driving a state road. Area. And then the buffer on the far south end of the project, excuse me, far north end of the project, will continue to be the oak trees? Well, yes, and they have grown quite a bit and yep. filled in. Okay. So so here I want to make a couple comments. Ms. Ms. Inglis, you're going to take offense to this, but, uh, but it was none of your doing. And I'd love for you to agree to this or, or disagree where you think the county's wrong. Well, Ms. Inglis, you didn't design that oak tree buffer. No. And that was a bad idea to begin with, was it not? Yes. So I just want to point, she says the county staff had a bad idea to begin with. I agree with that. Now we have a businessman who we all say we want to, we want to promote jobs, who's saying he's broke as a joke, and we're telling him you got to add 165 foot of an 8 foot fence and 125 foot of an 8 foot fence that we all agree is one heck of an eyesore, right? You claim you have an excavator out there right now that's knocking the tops off of those plastic piles? That's there today. If we get in our vehicles and drive out there now, there's an excavator out there working. Yes. Unfortunately, today was not working because the operator wasn't feeling well and we didn't want him there. But tomorrow it's going to be somebody else also working with that. Okay. Ms. Simmons, what are you going to do with that north buffer to make it better? Or are you leaving that as the oak trees to work with now? The, the, the oak tree buffer we're not touching we're leaving it so it needs to be maintained yes ma'am are you putting in irrigation the, those trees were struggling is that gonna is that gonna ha it has it has gonna... irrigation okay all right since they won Ms. Inglis, I saw you shaking your head in, in non-agreement when mr. Skolnick said very nicely I might put he said he, he is <laughs> agree but doesn't like the idea and I'm putting words in your mouth by the way I am putting words in your mouth you agree that you could be using the road to the south side to, for an access for EMS or anything like that, but you're going to go ahead and agree to put the road in on the north side. Why do you disagree with that? Because they, their site development plan did not show that rear access to go around, and it's not on their property. It's outside of their property. So okay. our site development plan would not have approved an access point that unless we had um, legal instruments that showed it. And it was, uh, easement, right, Ms. Simmons? Right. And it, to it. Right. And, yes. and the, um, the, as far as we know, that, it, that I know, the, the covenants and restrictions that are within the overall project, that's the combination of Henke and Recite Poly, the access that they showed uh, from the rear was only to the loading dock. It wasn't around that back building. Ms. Simmons, can you tell me where the loading dock is, ma'am? Yes, is sir. It, is it back here? Okay. Right there. So that's where they had access to right there. They couldn't get around. Okay. All right. So let me add to this, too. That yes, ma'am. The access road on the north side, there, it, it was, there was a site development plan that was processed um, 
right after this site development plan for the purpose of providing a improved road access to this property that would have to meet the requirements that for uh, emergency vehicles and for the heavy um, uh, trucks, trucks that, come that, that, that come in and yeah. out of there. It, we had no intentions or no idea that there was going to be an access coming around this, the south of that building. Ms. Simmons, had I done my homework, I would know this, but I'm, I'm presuming that that's still going to be a moral road. They're, you're not making them put down buildings or anything like that, right? The cost is nominal is what I'm saying. What, but what, still a cost. What, and we agreed with it. Okay. okay. What we're proposing today is it's improved to H2A or H2O, H, H2O, um, H20, okay, uh, H20 level, which can be, you know, a, a gravel or a, what kind of road? Marl shell. Okay, thank you. And um, but the original um, approval for the site development plan with NK, or it was Barry at the time, required paving it. And so we've acquiesced to. Okay, we just want to make sure that it's a stabilized, somewhat dust-free. Yes, ma'am. So the usage is not going to be that great on that road, even at your highest of highs. The only. <laughs> vehicles that go through that road it's either the manager or one of us okay all our material goes through the back okay. the pickup and the delivery okay now right. the what is correct and that's one of the things that uh, uh, someday i will understand when we begin this the trucks were going through the back so they were going through the road that belongs to the south florida water management district and they were going around the area of the uh, small portion of the Paul family, and then they would go into our site, and the trucks would dump the, the agricultural film. We're not going to bring any more agricultural film for a long time. So the material that we're bringing today, we have the ability to bring it through that uh, dock and unload it, and then load the pellets into it. So the movement in the front uh, frontage in the road on the front, it's minimal. Literally, two or three cars, probably every day. Well, Mr. Mr. Chair, what I hear you and Commissioner Harris saying, I, uh, I hate to sound like a politician right now, but I agree and disagree with certain aspects of it. And as you all know, I'm the biggest, I'm the biggest proponent of code enforcement engaging eyesores. And Mr. Skolnick, whether it offends you or not, I'm going to say this is the definition of an eyesore. And I've heard Commissioner Harris, you know, mention this property 30 times. I've heard him mention it once. However, Mr. Skolnick, Henke ain't no sexier just to your west there. And they're, and they're both the definition of commercial or industrial. You know, I don't know. Those things are all synonymous to me. Uh, but th those, are, those are properties. And, and Henke is not moving a tremendous amount of product either. And so I don't know if they're turning over a lot or what, but the point I'm making here is, is that I dislike us goalpost moving on anyone. If they have a site development plan that we've agreed to and, and now we're, we're saying, hey, guys, it doesn't look quite as nice as what we thought it was going to look, and we need you to, to tweak some things, you know, that's, that's telling a business we need you to spend more money out of your pocket that's not going to your bottom line, and it's potentially, you know, Running, running against what your, your business is trying to do, which is expand or make your operations more successful. However, you're, wanting, you're wanting to work with us. What I'd like to agree with my colleagues on is come back to us. But I'm, I'm going to request, Mr. Chair, that in 90 days, you know, it sounds to me like Ms. Emblitz and her staff have a good handle on what's going on out there. And I'm just hoping that in 90 days, we're going to be able to get a report back, Mr. Skolnick, that y'all have lowered some piles. You, you've at least put fence posts in the ground and you're starting to go vertical maybe with an opaque fence. And maybe there's some marl that's laying up against a dirt road that is going to start to get spread and we're, we're able to see something. That would make me more comfortable with, with now discussing that timeline. I can't agree to the five-year timeline tonight. I'm mm -hmm. also hoping that in 90 to 120 days, you're going to have somebody that is, that is you know, maybe more receptive and a bigger better feel of what's going on with this whole recycling situation. It sounds like you're telling us you're on the potential, you know, precipice of 
I hate to use it, a gold mine with, with recycling material being a bumper crop in this country right now. But we also, you know, we also, I think for 12 years now, we're, we're going to have a massive airport that's coming in six miles outside of Clewiston. Uh, Fred Ford is uh, getting ready to sign a deal with Miami International at any point. Uh, we have BioNitrogen, or is it, uh, what's the other company from Italy? Uh, uh, what is their name? Atio. You know, they've spent a few million out there. They have yet to produce anything that they said they were going to do. And so it just seems time after time after time we get a snake oil salesman that comes in and tells us some wonderful things are going to happen, and it rubs us wrong a little bit. So uh, I'm looking forward to hearing a report back from you in 90 days. I'm not calling you a snake oil salesman. I understand you're on hard times right now. But uh, I'm, I'm appreciative that you're working with staff, and you guys, you guys have found a tremendous amount of area that you agree on. And, uh, and you know, that five-year time frame, assemblage. Y'all are, are trying to push it back to 730 days or two years, right? Two years. And the five-year was your proposal, but but y'all y'all actually said we'd love it to be unlimited. We, 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 if the process works. Yes, sir. And we find a way to process the agricultural film. You're moving And to there it. is, and there, in, in the state of Florida, there are over 40,000 tons of material uh, being used of this material every year. Yes, sir. Um, we were bringing some of the material here. The other one was being dumped or being burned. If the process works, we would love nothing better than to have material so we can process it and make money. Yes, sir. So if, if, if we're putting a limit uh, on, on, on us having that material there, we shouldn't have that material there. <laughs> We've lost a lot of money by having that material there. Yes, sir. We don't want to want. We don't want to have it there. If we have to take, as per the agreement that we have, if we have to take that material to the landfill, you, which is literally what it says, the land. Uh, it, I mean, it's yours. It's, it's more than a million dollars. The, the to, cost to, becomes to, so prohibitive that your back it, is broken at that point. Absolutely. Yes, sir. I understand that, and so that's what I'm. That's what I'm trying to avoid, Miss Emblage, is locking them into they have a 730 i mean you're a business person you're, you're saying if you're telling me in 730 days i have to start moving all this then let's 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 go ahead because the technology is probably not going to exist in overnight which is two years this is not equipment that you go into a store and you buy it. yes sir this is equipment that you have to go to experts design it then they have to build it then they have to bring it in and then we can start processing. Yes, sir. And from the moment that we get the equipment until the moment that we're processing, it could take between four months to a year because of issues that the system may have that you have to start adjusting. Yes, sir. And that's the reason for the length of time that we're requesting. Well, so, I'm, I'm, I'm looking forward to the update. So, uh, I like the so why, why, didn't, why didn't you go already do this months ago? Why are you just now doing it now? We've been. We've been looking for an investor literally for the last two years. But you still might not have one, right? We have one who's waiting for the decision of this commission today. And then you're saying uh, you, can't, you can't do it in five years. So if we don't give you five years, you can't do anything. Is that correct? The position of, the, of, of our position right now, because I cannot say the position of the investor. Our position right now is for us to get the investor in we need to be able to ex tell him within the next two years, we have to find a solution for the agricultural film, which he's already working on it. And then we have three years to process what we have there. That's more or less the time that he's requesting from us to be able to get. I, I, I don't know if you want to, I don't know how this situation with not agreeing or 90 days, I don't know how that really... I, I actually want to, want to make a point. I appreciate... No, yeah, and, and, and to, to go to what you were saying, sir, that, that's exactly what I said a while ago. I said, two years, come back, we, we keep moving forward. And Mr. Willis, that's, that's exactly what I'd like to offer. Um, hearing both what, what you said and, and what, what Mr. Carson said and in and, and consideration of, of what their investor is, is uh, let me just offer this. You know, we need a five-year time frame, but you need to understand what uh, a, what's going on is proper on the site, that we're making progress, and that we know what's going on. Now, we need you to say, you have five years of process that material. But what we can say is, give us that. We'll be back in 90 days with photos of our site, or you can come out and visit it, and we'll give you a 90-day report on where we're at. 
so you can guarantee that we've done it. And we'll come back every year after. Let's require an annual report. Bring us in here. We'll bring photos of materials, photos of the shop. You can go walk, walk the equipment when we've got it up and running in a year or two years' time or in eight months' time. You know, we need the five years. It's realistically what it's going to take. Well, let's put some reporting requirements on it. Bring us back here. Hold our feet to the fire. And if in a year you say, hey, look, you push some of that material back, make it lower. Make it, drop it another two feet. Push it. Hey, hey, that netting's not working. Let's, let's look at a different kind of netting on there. We want to work with you. We've been trying to work with you in good faith all the time. Uh, well, I don't. I don't want to say a lot to you guys. I don't want to tell you that. I just. I just want to see the problem solved. And I understand the investment part of it. Trust me. We just went through purchasing uh, property, and it was almost impossible to get an investor at this period with everything the way it is. So my question is, and, and this question here is one I need. I need a straight answer on. What I heard said, and correct me if I'm wrong. If we did not give the five years, this investor was going to walk. Was that what I heard? That is, that is exactly what he's told us, sir. Okay. If you tell us something different yeah. tonight, we need to either get them on the phone or come back to you, and we're not going to be able to do anything until we come back. Okay, hang on one second. Mr. Chairman. No, go ahead. Yes, sir. Uh, listen, and, and I believe it's Mr. Bain speaking there now, correct? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. And, and look, and, and look, and, and I, 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 I can see every bit of it, and I drive by there, and I absolutely understand the frustrations of, of my uh, of, of our board and the constituents and of the company. But look, uh, quite frankly, once they once they develop and, and they get the technology where they want it to be, they're going to start processing it. So the material is not going to go away. It's going to continue to come in and be processed, which is what we want to see. So, I, I mean, worried about moving it in five years, I think that's kind of a mute point because they're going to hopefully develop the develop a process and then continually turn, turn material over. So, I think putting an arbitrary number of five years to get rid of it is kind of, I, I, again, Commissioner Turner said it best, we're putting um, odd, odd covenants on them, and, and I think it's going to hamper the company because I don't want to see them necessarily do away. I want to see them processing, making, you know, making their end product and, and, um, and look, and I get it. If they need to make their investor comfortable, I don't know why it can't be just like any other business and it be something ongoing. I think as long as they're working with our staff, they're moving forward, they're getting their investor, they're, our staff ought to be able to keep a finger on that and work with them so that they can be successful. Because quite frankly, like Mr. Skonick said, if they're not successful, they're going to walk away and then we're going to clean it up. And I don't want to see that either. Yeah, and understand that that's exactly what I've been saying. I never said it'd be done in two years. I said, show us that you're doing it. So understand, I don't want to see you go away neither. When I visited the site, the gentleman I walked around with, I walked around with two fellas, and at that point, your biggest headache was your buildings that was falling apart. And it was trying to, we was having a lot of problems. We backed off, we give you room to fix that. You had stuff was hanging off of buildings when I was out there and it was from the storm, and y'all were taking care of that. So I'm not saying, I'm not saying I want you done in two years. My whole point was, I just want to see something moving. So, I mean, well, well, with, that, I, with that said, we could, you know, modify number five to make it a two year reporting requirement and say, you know, within two, you know, at a period of two years, you got to come back to this board, show us, show you the progress that you made, show the work we're making and, you know, and, and whether you need to set some further reporting requirements beyond two years, um, then we're good. If it's a reporting requirement, I, we can live with that, sir. I'm okay back. with it not even being a two-year covenant on it. Just make it ongoing. As long as you're doing your due diligence, as long as you're moving forward, then make it happen. And, that, and that's just the, and that's if we the whole key. Because like I said, now for four years, it really hadn't been that way. And I get it. I know a business is hard. You've been, and, and trust me, I understand. You, you're on hard times. Everybody is. So, again, I don't want business to go away. And I told the gentleman when I went that day, I said, look, we don't want to run business out of Henry County. But we have to do business. And we have to make sure that it's done properly. So, I mean, I, I'm in the same boat. I don't want to see them go off. I don't want to see them go away. We need business here. But on the same token, we want good business. Yeah. We're going we're to make it better looking site. We're going to keep it up. And, uh, yeah. and we will come back to you. Mr. Chair, I'll yes, call, sir. For, call for a question. Wait, wait, Mr. Mr. Chair. May I, may I please? Can I hear the uh, motion again? Uh, he was calling for, a, calling for a vote. But um, Carson, got one more. Yeah. Mr. Turner, one more Mr. comment. Mr. We're going to go from there. Oh, so... Can we have a report back from, from Recite Poly in October, our last meeting in October? Can we get a report from them? Uh, see if see if some action have been taken toward these things. See if they and staff have kind of agreed that the ball is being moved down the field, so to speak. And and then a 730-day time frame on them coming back and saying, 
where we're at. And, and now I think that that gives you the ability, you're locked in stone at that point, to go back to your investor and say, listen, they didn't slam the door, but, but they, are, they are wanting to see us you know, show some progress. And then the last thing I would ask is, are, is it your intentions right now to start taking in other material and recycling in your yeah. in your machines with cleaner material that's going to allow you to that, That's the point. We're, we get the investment to repair the machinery, begin bringing in that cleaner material that, as you said, as Ms. Golick said, is, is less expensive to obtain right now, start generating those jobs right away, and continue to work to develop to either you know, to start carrying in that agricultural material, which it's it's a cleaning thing. we got to come up with the right way to pre-clean it. So, and that, Mr. And that's Chair, we're trying to crack. basically he's saying that he cannot move forward without the investors. Right. Yeah. So, yeah. But so, so our request would be that, you know, if you want to <laughs> modify Condition 5 of this agreement to say, you know, a two-year reporting or a 90-day and a two-year reporting period um, in lieu of, you know, the current way that's written. Um, are, are you referring to uh, number five or four? I think number four. I'm sorry, it's number on the four. agreement. I apologize. Oh, yeah, yeah, it's number five on the, on the agreement. Yeah, paragraph five of the agreement. So I'd like to hear Miss Miss um, Margaret. Yes. Input on what he just asked about the coming in ninety days and then two years. Well, I, I guess, I'm not sure if if you're asking for the agreement to be delayed. Until that 90 days? No, is that what you're saying? I think what we're saying, Ms. English, I think, is what we're saying is that 90 days, because you already have the 90 days in there, essentially. Well, for We're going to see some action that occurs, right? Sure. They're going to be able to go down the path of talking with their investor or finding a potential investor. Then from there, they can go to said entity and say, we have 730 days. But essentially, no action has to be taken. The county is going to be monitoring us. We're not demanding that they recycle. Your, your, your paragraph 5, recycle quality shall recycle all piles of agricultural plastic. That will not occur. That will not occur in 730 days. And that language will be re rewritten. So that it's just basically going to say, we're going to have a nice conversation at that point but, and see what their time frame is moving uh, forward. Margaret, could we just table it for 90 days? Then uh, go, go look at it. Well, it's the the timing, the urgency isn't on our part per se; it's on Recite Polly's part. Well, that's okay. <laughs> well, and and but I. All we're trying to do I, is, is follow yeah. through with what our goal yeah. was, which was reduce an eyesore. Yeah. So, well, that yes. and, get, you know, and, and you've given us the tool to move that. Ms. Right. Yeah. Now, Commissioner, we need the we we want to enter into agreement. We need that agreement in place with the county. We need to understand what the county's position is going to be long term. Well, I can tell you long term, I'd love to see y'all. If you're processing that, it's not there to look at. Right. Everybody's happy. You're happy. You got your, you're getting back on your feet. I mean, that's my long term goal is to see you do what you intended to do when you started. I just want to see you <laughs> doing this too, sir. Right, because it's been four years and we haven't doing it. So I, I just want to see you doing it. That's all. My goal is to see those oak trees mature a handful of other trees that are interspersed throughout and that pile be as high as those trees yeah, well, you know and yeah. and you're you're constantly processing everybody's plastic out of Amokalee and and chuck over and farm and so on and so forth yeah okay, okay. so we, we did have a question called for so i need a motion that, that kind of brings everything to a head um, do we if, have a motion? If I'm understanding, you can't move forward without, without the investor, That's right? right? That's correct, ma'am. So if we motion the 90 days and then the two years, and if it's not where, where it should be with the investor, then we pull it. Mm -hmm. he, you know. We have zero ability to do that, in my yeah. opinion, but no. yeah. I'm, I'm going to listen. Anyway, he, they said they got to have five years. But if we, just, if we give them the five years, but in 90 days, something needs to happen. Because either way it go, we're going to be right back where we started. I'm not going to wait five years. That's, we right that's why I'm totally in agreement. So give them 90 days to report back to us, and then all other compliances will be ongoing without any kind of time frame. And, and again, I, I, I don't have a problem with that. I mean, if we if we come back, you know, I'm, I'm willing to look at it. The last thing I want to see to do is business close their doors. That we, doesn't profit anyone. Yes, so sir. if you come back and say, hey, this is what we've done, and I said that from the very beginning. This is what we've done, and I'm willing to move forward and go on. 
Commissioner Swiddle, did you make that in the form of a motion? Yeah, well, I want to make sure that that's acceptable to Mr. Bain's business model. Uh, it, 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 the, the request would be, sir, that yeah, we will, that the county enters into this agreement, that the request, all, all of the time frames, the, the, the 90 days for the fence to reduce the piles um, to the 180 days for the road, that's all set in stone in here. Um, we'll come back with the 90 days to just bring you photos of, of that, that fencing being completed um, and those piles being reduced, and you can come out there and see it. Um, our request will be that we'll come back in two years. Um, you know, uh, as I said, we, that we, we're not, we cannot guarantee that all the material will be removed in five years, in two years. You know, that needs to be moved out of here. There'll be a reporting when we come back in two years. You come back in two years, and you know, we'll, you'll see. You'll see the investment. You'll see the improved equipment. You'll see the, the materials moving on and off the site. You'll have a report of how many jobs are on that site, and we'll have a report to you of how we're doing with that material, what we're doing with it. You know, how we've developed the process on there, how we're starting to stream it into the, into the site or clean it. Um, and, and, and you can make the decision in two years whether there's additional site improvements that need to be made. Okay. I, I don't love to see the I can, line moved again, but that would be our request. Right. Only Do thing, my colleagues have a problem supporting that? No, the only thing I would say, Commissioner Swindle, is, is I dislike the county having the ability to further increase the site improvement plan because that's that's yep. creating undue burden, and and I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna use proper language here. I would litigate the county if you came back to me and moved the goalpost again. Yeah, I don't I was disagree. Say it much more harshly, and but, that's exactly yeah. what we don't want to do. We yeah. understand that we're part of this community, sir. Yeah, but that's have why a we motion, avoid doing yeah. that. That's no, why we've been working with staff. That's yeah. why we've agreed to these conditions. What's your What's your motion, Commissioner Swindle? Uh, the motion basically going to be that we give uh, we grant the time frame for the yeah. 90 days for the improve the immediate improvements to be made, and then we just do a two year update um, from Recycle Poly on their operations. So essentially, I'd like to just try to clear that up a little bit. 90 days for the, the some of the improvements, 180 days for the other improvements. Basically, your entire agreement that has been presented, Miss Emblage, yeah. minus paragraph five, with the they will recycle 100 percent of the material in those piles within that time frame. And we're not That's expecting it all to be extracted. Just want to see it work going. Yeah. Everyone knows you're not going to process that. And they will come back to us within that, a two-year so. time frame. Okay, so to be clear, if I could. So what, what is the motion? To Go ahead, Attorney Lamp. Yeah, so let me just. So what I'm understanding is that it's the written agreement that's yep. in front of you minus paragraph five. Yes. But replacing paragraph five with a two-year report um, requirement. Mm -hmm. Yes. But period. So that sounds like that's the agreement. But I, I want to be clear about the effect of that is that they report to you in two years and they say, you know, nothing's moved. Let's just say worst case scenario, nothing's yes. moved, all the equipment's failing. It, it's, it's all just looks the same except for the, the, the steps they did agree to, you know, the lowering the piles, the fences up, right. the nets. But otherwise the piles are still there and they come and tell you that in two years, the piles are still there and yeah. life is bad. Yeah. And then you guys say, we don't like that. But you, part of this agreement, paragraph um, uh, eight, is we don't take enforcement action. We agree by signing this, the, the conditions that exist now, we are accepting. So if you don't like the piles being there, a two-year report doesn't get them removed. No, sir. It, 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 removed. It, and they no. may stay there forever. That pile, the, what is there currently, <laughs> and our ability to monitor that via photographs or whatever it is needs to be, they cannot keep bringing said material in because the fact is, is they could be getting paid for, 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 okay. for taking that off. But I just want to make sure that we're, we're limiting it to what it is right now. The eyesore is not going to get any worse, so to speak. And, and to your point, Mr. Lapham, you are excusing the existing outstanding code enforcement action. That's what this is settling. But, you know, you're certainly not stipulating that you're agreeing that it doesn't constitute a, a violation. You agree that these steps are currently satisfying it. If, uh, well, if, then if, we if, need if to change the second part of uh, the second sentence of paragraph 8. I mean, the second sentence says we're agreeing that all the existing conditions are accepted with the agreed changes you're making, and we won't pursue those existing conditions but the against biggest, you. The biggest part of that change was... Remove, reducing the pile. Well, the biggest, it was on package deal. It was yeah. reduce, move, yes. reduce yeah. fences, nets, and, and have it all gone. 
and going yes, and sir. recycling within two years. That yes, was the deal. And if you take out the two years, um, I, I'm just not clear on what he's saying about paragraph eight because um, as it's written, you would not be able to, two years from now, say, we want the piles gone next year because they'd have a release and they'd be absolved from having to get the piles removed a year later unless we change eight. Well, and Mr. Chair, all I would say to that is, is we're, we're, you know, you can't take somebody that doesn't have the ability to perform something and tell them to create magic money and go perform it. So the pile that you're stuck with, either Recite Poly is going to be successful in their new business model moving forward and we're going to see that pile go away, or they're not, and said pile is going to be there in perpetuity. Well, exactly. The, the, Mr. Harrison, our, our position is, I don't want to be there five years later having this conversation again. Well, we're going to do that. We're going to do that. No, I don't want to have that conversation. Yeah, we're tired of hearing from those cats. Ben, I'm, yeah. Uh, yeah. So, I mean, we, we got to see something happening. From, from point one, I said, I never said finished. I said ongoing. That's what I said. And so, that's where I'm at. I mean, I, I, I don't want to see business go away, but we have to see it going. Okay. May I add to the conversation, sir? Absolutely. Um, if we agree to the five years, they still have to do all of these yeah. improvements. Maybe that's okay. what you yeah. and, and so we agree to the five years, but if they're in breach of any of the parts of this, and they really, you know, I, I, I understand that, you know, once they get the equipment and it gets going, it could take a while before they could actually recycle all of it. Sure. So at this point in time, so that based on all this conversation, the five years at this point, I think is it is acceptable as long as we have everything else and they have to be in compliance with their site development plan and I'm 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 gonna have further conversations with them because there's certain things that they've done and there's certain things that haven't quite been done and that need to be taken care of. Well, Mr. Chair, about that. So what you're saying now is you're good with that. As yes. long as Mr. Chair, I make a motion. We we don't have a motion on the floor, do we? No. No, okay. we don't. We need Mr. a motion. Mr. Chair, I make a motion to keep the agreement completely intact, actually, with a five-year window. Um, and I still, Ms. Imlich, would like a report back in 90 days to see what action has been taken. No, that's in the report. That's all in there, too. Yep. No, no, it's not. no, it's not now, but we'll it's have It's not now. So. Oh, I've seen 90 and 180 and everything. Yeah, the time frames were there. Yeah, the no, there was no, they didn't have to take action here. So I no, 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 yes, I did see the, yeah. And then, uh, and then uh, a 730-day report back as well, just to give us a general update. And then okay. that's the end of that ship. Uh, so two reports. I'll, I'll second that motion. Okay. So, okay. The, the, okay. and to be totally clear, it's the agreement that you were presented with, with paragraph five, with the blank. It says within blank years of the date hereof, is the number is five, the five is being inserted there, and then we're adding a rep two reporting uh, 90 periods, a ninety-day report and a two-year report on conditions and projections, but it's reporting. It doesn't require anything other than them telling you what's going on, yep. and that's your motion. I, I, just, I just want to see it going on. I'm good with that. Last point that I have, last discussion point I have, do we completely remove our ability as a county with agreeing to set a mm -hmm. item that we have no ability to monitor, visit, come in? Oh, no, we have it written in there. Well, that's paragraph six. Perfect. We can okay. So uh, that's, your, that's your motion? Yes, sir. Do I have a second? I'll second the motion. We got a motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Swindle. Is there any further discussion? <laughs> I, I cannot agree on any of that. Okay, well, we'll, we'll get that in the vote. Okay. Um, anyone on the phone? Hearing none. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Aye. Motion carries. Thank Can't you, wait to see it time. going, fellas. So. Thank, you, thank you for your time. Yep. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Parker. Mm -hmm. Okay. Eric Lee at the Airport Advisory Board member reappointments. At the last board meeting, um, Fisher Turner asked why Ernie Hughes wasn't asked to be uh, reappointed. We spoke. I gave my reason. I didn't own a plane or have a tea hanger, but 
I reached out to him as directed by board consensus. He's willing to serve. Recommendation is to reappoint him. So moved. Second. Motion by Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Bird. Mm -hmm. okay. Any further discussion on the board? No, sir. Any on the phone? Hearing none, all that, uh, I'm sorry, quick question. Is that the only spot open, uh, Mr. Parker? Yes, sir. Okay, thank you. All, right, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, the next item I have for you is Airglades Airport easements for with U.S. Sugar for Force Main. This is an easement template. It's a grant perpetual public utility easement along with a temporary construction easement. So moved. To, to uh, ask for the request of the grant of the perpetual public utility easement to Henry County temporary access to start season with the USS Sugar for the various properties. Second. Subject just by so. Commissioner Turner, second by Commissioner Bird. Bird. Any further discussion? Still, just to be clear, subject to further revision by me because it's still a work in progress. Okay. Yes, sir. <clears throat> Anyone on the phone? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, the next item I had for you is permission to negotiate STAs with Chris Tell and Parker Mudge Smith for the jailhouse and courthouse facilities. I need to bring that back to you because we're not, we're not, I'm not ready to bring it to you yet. So. Okay. And Those the number, the number four was the Henry County Health Department. I'll just give you a brief update of where I'm at. This is Chris Tell change order number eight to STA number one for hurricane impact windows. The board recalls. You approve doing windows, then we approve taking the windows out to a DEM grant. Uh -huh. Now they want to move forward with the windows outside the DEM grant. Uh -huh. We're working on that. Um, still clarifying that guaranteed maximum price. And then um, the health department director raised a question about ADA compliant with the doors. I need to check out. So when I get that done, I'll bring it back to you. And the doors is related to the storefront of the health department in LaBelle. So let's I leave it alone. I, I don't know well, the issue would be there, but I, no big deal. No problem. Well, when you're ready to, to go down that rabbit hole, I'm dying to run down it with you. Well, take off and off. <laughs> that'll, be in, that'll be at the next board meeting. Um, okay. Next item I have for you is the plus contract with Invoice Cloud for online bill payments. Is that a money saver? I think it'll be a money saver. It's more con good customer service for the constituents in the Port LaBelle utility system. No, so moved. Second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion on that? Anyone on the phone? That's pretty much how everybody does business anymore, so it's, it's good yes. we're getting into that situation. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Okay, next item I have for you is MV contract transportation lease for passenger equipment for providing transportation for disadvantaged services. I handed out the lease agreement and I'll also emailed it to you. This is for the two new um, ADA compliant vans. Entertain a motion on that? So moved. Have a second. Second. Motion by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion on that? Anyone on the phone? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Aye. Motion carries. Chairman, I have one walk on item. This is addendum to supplemental task authorization number seven with Parker Mudgett Smith for phase two historic rehabilitation of the Henry County Courthouse. This addendum is to add the grant assurances from the state grant for the courthouse roof repairs. We approved it previously for Chris Taylor. It just has to be approved with Parker Mudgett Smith. Okay. So moved. Moved. Move. Second. Motion okay. by Commissioner Harris, second by Commissioner Turner. Any further discussion on that? Anyone on the phone? All those in favor? Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you. Mr. Mr. Chair. Yes, sir. Um, was there a reason why the old business list didn't make it to the agenda? Other than I just didn't have time to do it. Temple. So I'll send it out to you tomorrow. Right. Thank you, ma'am. Okay. Uh, does anyone like to address the board at this time, public hearing wise?
with us by district, Ms. Bird. All is fine. Just glad everybody stays. Good to see everybody. Chief Nelson, I got a text that I need to share with you that came in. Thank you. Mr. Harris. Uh, anyway, just a six months report on construction. We had 94 single family dwellings that's turned the key and they're in the house paying taxes. 88 of those was in Port LaBelle. We had 36 mobile homes and six modulars. And uh, that's in the bill. That uh, totals 94 altogether. 88 was at Port LaBelle. And uh, 36 mobile homes and six modulars and one commercial. I think that's interesting. Good. For this time, for the time yeah. we're in, it's really good. Yeah, when you go out there and look, Laura, Roger back there, he can tell you all about it. Man, talking to uh, Lynn and a couple down at the office, they they're just busier than they ever have been, so that's really, that's really a good thing. Might be moving in from Miami. What? Mr. Turner? Uh, Shane, I have a uh, I sent uh, Miss Davis. I usually see. E I usually send emails. I'm pretty sure I sent her a text this time, but I can't re recall it to be honest with you. But um, the Road and Bridge Department just spun on a dime and responded to a handful of things that were requested from constituents. I really appreciate you all jumping on that, Miss Davis. Thank you so much. Uh, 901 Grattan Road uh, and a handful of other people in the Hookers Point MSBU Lighting District uh, have have some lights that are out. So if y'all could look into that, please, for me, sir. Um, and then I wanted to, I wanted to ask, um, Commissioner Swindle and Commissioner Bird. it's unfortunate that I can't talk with, with you all outside of here, but the Harlem Academy has me, has me very distraught. So, and so I'd like to get an update from you on that first, Ms. Bird, because I'm, I'm, I'm pretty sure you're probably closest to it. So Harlem Academy, um, Chris did send a letter out to us that, um, that they will no longer be functioning. And so it's deed, it was deeded to them and will be deeded back to the county. Um, and we do have a couple of meetings to try to, you know, see what we can do to work it out uh, with different people that wants to come in. But um, it's, it was not, you know, a lot of people think that the county owned that, but it's not, it was not up under the leadership of Henry County. It was up under the leadership of South Florida Community Health, um, not health care, but child care. So, but um, we do have a couple of meetings set up in the next, you know, next couple of days to see if we could potentially pull somebody in. Now, Jennifer did speak with Chris to see if um, they would potentially come in, and I'll let her speak on that. I can give you a brief update on that. So, as you all know, and I think I sent an email, I believe I sent an email to everyone a while back, um, just given the latest uh, chain of events. So, um, during COVID, of course, all the daycares were closed. And um, at some point, Mr. Hansen, who's the director of Child Care of Southwest Florida, called um, and gave me a potential opening date for the LaBelle location. Um, I think at that point in time, they had just opened the Lee County location and stated that they didn't know at that time when they were going to open the Cluiston location. And so it had not been established at that point in time in that conversation that they weren't opening, at least that wasn't communicated to me that way. And so at the such time that they had an update, they would let me know. Unfortunately, um, that's not exactly what happened. And so um, it, there was a letter that was circulated within the community, and we kind of found out about it on the back end, which we were disappointed about. But it is what it is. And, and moving forward, I have had a discussion with Mr. Hansen, um, several discussions with him since then. And um, it is just not feasible for them to open that facility at this time. So we talked about what that might look like. Uh, there are several um, organizations that reached out to me and said, hey, is there something we can do to help them? You know, I explained to them it wasn't us. It was, it was the other entity. Um, and, and I communicated that. I've communicated that with them and let them know that there are folks out there that are, would be willing to help them open those doors back up and at this time they're just not able to um, or able to open it up in the same footprint that they have basically they they have too much overhead I think and 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 too less revenue basically from a business perspective to to make it work however 
going forward, um, they would potentially be interested in coming back in a smaller footprint. And so we just learned, was it last week? Maybe, maybe it was last week or the week before. Um, we know that there's a reverter clause. So the county owned that facility way back at some point in time. Uh, the county deeded it to Child Care Southwest Florida because they had some kind of grant opportunity. And it had, no, no, we did. Was, we, you need to check that because I'm pretty sure we voted against that deeding process because with the way they wrote it, they wanted us to deed it over to them so that they could qualify for grants. And the reverter that I recall was... I didn't even know that we owned it. I thought U.S. Sugar gave it to us in perpetuity as long as it was used as an educational facility. But I'm 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 so excited I'm, about y'all telling us how I that. I may all... have misspoke. Well, I, yeah, I. When I read it, it said it was deeded it, to them. Yeah. There's yeah. a deed from Henry County to Child Care of Southwest right. Florida. I believe it's 0304 time frame. Right. So that was before my time. Right. But uh, so I don't know the story on it. But I do know it has a reverter clause. Yes. If they don't use it for that. If yes. they don't use it as a school within. Nine? And there's like two different periods. Yeah. One is if they fail to use it as a school when the X days, then we it can revert to us. Or if they, some other default by them, it's a six month period. But yeah. Either way, they're going to miss both of those time periods. So we could insist that it be deeded back to us. Yes. But it has a mortgage. Yes, that's, from, a, from an SBA loan? Yeah, and that's what we just found out about. Um, and, and it started out at, I, I think, 150 or, yeah. and it's down to 90-something now. And so we Ms. Were, Davis? Yes. Was that the Child Care Center in Southwest Florida that applied for that mortgage? Yes, it was an SBA? SBA loan. Yeah. And so we were just made aware of that. Um, yeah. The county attorney's office researched it, in fact, found out that there is a mortgage um, associated with it because we didn't know if it was just an SBA loan. Maybe there wasn't. A, you, you never know. I'd love to see when that time frame is and be, because if they did that in spite of the conversation that we have, I'm absolutely going to lose my mind publicly over that. Well, that, so, okay, yeah. I understand what you're saying. So, so we'll find that out. And so when it reverts back to the county, um, uh, and, and Mark can speak to how that happens, either they initiate it or we initiate it, um, there is a mortgage associated with that property. And so with all that said, the county before COVID, before any of these issues, for years we've had discussions, but as of late, we've, we, um, before COVID, we, we were gaining some traction. Um, we've been working, we were working with Child Care Southwest Florida. That facility consists of three wings of which I'll just, this, this isn't exact, but let's just say they were occupying a total capacity of one of the three wings and so we recognize that that facility is very important to the Harlan community and that there is a lot of opportunity that could occur in that facility for the constituents of Hendry County and for Harlem specifically to bring in additional services and or potentially businesses or there it could look like anything we want it to look like yes. um, but it's a valuable piece of property for the community um, to provide a, a, for many different reasons, and to provide a higher quality of life for, for all. And so we were working with them, and they, on their own, um, cleaned out all the areas that were not being utilized. And so they were full on board working, wanting to work with us, and they, they brought people in, and they cleaned it out. It looks great. We've, we've toured it since then. Yes. In addition to that, we received some DEP money and got a um, and got a grant and did an asbestos um, abatement um, report. Okay. Um, and so now we have that report back, and that this was right before COVID. I, I want right to say. Yeah. Um, and so we were getting ready to look to see, and we will continue to see if we can maybe find some DEP money to do some of the abatement work. Uh, medication work it, it it wasn't as as bad as maybe we had expected so I think it's I think going to be windows. Fe feasible to to be able to to make those improvements and so we're moving forward with that in addition under the um, circumstances um, we will fairly soon um, be ready to and we've already had a few different people come to us and say hey I'd like to maybe do this or I'd like to maybe do that 
And so that's what uh, Commissioner Bird is referring to, some meetings that we have set up just to have some preliminary discussions with some folks and some ideas. And then I would foresee, this isn't written in stone, this is just the way I foresee us potentially moving forward. When, we, when we're ready, we would do some kind of solicitation, if you will, of businesses and or nonprofits of, hey, this is available. What would you like to bring to the table with some type of partnership with the county once once we have the property back in the county's name, if you will, and and see what that looks like. Something similar, but probably different than what we did with the United Way, where we have shared space, we have multiple um, partners coming in and providing services um, for various different reasons. We we were thinking of after school programs. We were thinking of the um, business. Um, it, it was a lot of things that was put out. Um, to use to utilize the building until everything you know took place but with some of the things that you're asking i have been working with uh, uh rmca trying to get the 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 daycare the kids that don't have a place to go because that's the biggest thing right now is making sure that they have a place to go that was attending the daycare because it it's, it's important to the community and it's gonna have to be a place that they can walk because a lot of parents walk um, to the daycare. It's, it's a sore eye for us that is closed, but we are working, you know, to potentially try to put something back there, you know, that's going to benefit the community. So we've been working on it, and the thing is, we was trying not to put the horse, the cop before the horse. So, you know, we have been working on it, you know, quite a bit way before the COVID came in, you know, but then this came out. So Jennifer, who's responsible for the mortgage? We will, we will be, be at the point in time that, correct, Mark? Right. It's the kind of thing that we really we got to coordinate in advance between child care and SBA and not just take the deed. And right. Because if we took the deed and didn't deal with the mortgage, the mor we, that's a default. And we, we, we need to immediately start paying or we're going to be subject to foreclosure by SBA. So it's the kind of thing we'd want to coordinate in advance and not just take ownership so, and then hope for the So best. they don't have any responsibility? Sounds like we do. They wouldn't have any responsibility for the mortgages. Well, they're they're the ones legally obligated, but um, so it, it had to be settled. It had to be resolved yeah. with SBA. SBA would have to agree to like some side agreement to take you know maybe fifty cents on the dollar from them, and then then the deed comes free and clear to us, something like that. And that was suggested by Mr. Hansen to see if, and I don't, and I told him I didn't know if that was even possible. Um, but he did suggest that we might try to see if we could get, not get it forgiven. What's the balance? Um, 90-something thousand. 93, I think. That's the balance? Mm -hmm. yeah. And it was a repair for one of the wings for a roof after Wilma. There was mm -hmm. damage, and it, it was over and above what their insurance or what have you paid for it. Yeah. I remember so vividly when they wanted us to deed over. So, I mean, it must have been a... a even stronger language, I presume, because they were wanting to apply to a federal grant that was going to allow them to put impact resistant windows, new air conditioning, new heating systems. You know, they, 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 A to Z, I remember it, and it was a full court press on what they were doing. And, you know, it, it just really opened up uh, my eyes to what was actually occurring at that facility. Um, well, I have some very strong suggestions on some things that could occur out there. Um, and, and I would love for us as a board to be able to, to vet it a little bit, Ms. Bird. Um, and um, I look forward to that opportunity so that that decision doesn't get made in a vacuum. Uh, to say that that facility means something to the Harlem community uh, is an understatement of, of mass proportions, uh, not only just from a historical perspective, but also if you go out there and you, you're in those halls and you see the young people that are coming through there, and you, you, you see the moms and dads that are trying to get their, their, their babies up to the next level and uh, the volume of young people that you see that are walking through those doors, that's, uh, that's what will really shake you to your core. And uh, they're white, black, brown, green, and purple. You know, it, it, it isn't. Now, granted, it's the community. Yes, ma'am. It, it, it's, it, it's a larger percentage right, of the African-American community that resides in that community, but it, 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 it runs the gamut. Look and so we have to make sure that we, we keep that facility up and running. And, uh, and you know, just for full disclosure, I was, I was one of the biggest anti to a number of facilities when I first looked at the VPK 
numbers and the performance. And then when you really drill in on Maslow's hierarchy of needs and some of the, the low hanging fruits that were being harvested, I think with what Ms. Felicia did out there at that facility was nothing short of amazing. And then whenever they changed some of the different assessment tools, you know, she made some amazing strides out there. So, you know, I don't know what, I, it's funny. I asked my assistant to get me Felicia's number today because I wanted to talk directly to the horse that was running that joint and hear her take on things. And then I wanted, as a county, I wanted us to look at, we're obviously not in the childcare business, uh, but we have a facility. And then we have a commissioner that has a, a really strong chance, I think, of becoming superintendent of schools. And we have a commissioner that has a few years of educational background, another one that has a few years of educational background, another one that you know has a direct tie to it. And I think that we have a golden opportunity here to saddle up with our school board and say, hey, are, are there some things that can be harvested here? And I don't, you know, I know it gets scary whenever you start mixing adults with children, uh, but, you know, to, to hear what Commissioner Swindle has done with this campus and then the, the, the FTE certifications that we've qualified for and then know what Marlon Vaughn has tried to do with the, the Joseph Project, I just think that this is a golden opportunity for us. And we were planning, because before <laughs> they, they, they closed, that's exactly what we were planning to do. And we were, we were and Shane was involved, and Margaret was involved, and we, we have maps, and we have conceptual designs on how to accomplish mixing um, children with yeah. adults. And yes, so there's ways to do it. Yep. And, and we actually wanted to make it a campus yeah. because the gym and the pool are right across the street. And we even talked um, about potentially, it'll come back to you all, um, to potentially even close that road. I would and, love to do that. And then it would whenever, be a you know. campus yeah. type atmosphere yeah. after school get done with their after school program they can go to the gym they don't have to worry about you know traffic and so i think there's a lot of opportunity there yeah. i do as well it's great to know that y'all are having that conversation with david so i'm i'm glad we had the conversation about it and, uh, commissioner swindle can you hear us he's gone I'm hearing you and i'm smiling i love the concept i've had grand views of of the concept of a community school there for quite some yeah, time you ain't so no now that <laughs> Running for superintendent of schools, man. Look at you, boy. <laughs> I love it. <laughs> now that uh, Emily's got the sign order straight away, maybe we can make that happen. Good deal. Well, I look forward to it. <laughs> My turn. He's through. Yeah, are you done? I thought you had a question for him, too. So no, sir. I just, I just I want to make sure he's on board. Mr. Swindler, you're on board. Up. Hey, uh, real quick, uh, yeah, thank you, Commissioner Turner, for teeing that up. I do appreciate that conversation. I look forward to carrying that to the next level. But the only thing that I do want to mention on my time was I took a call earlier today about the Clewiston Cemetery. Um, I, don't, I don't know if it's uh, – I don't know if staff's uh, just busy, backed up, but it just needed some uh, attention with weeds overgrown, grass getting high, quite a bit of garbage. Um, and I, I, I know I don't know the correct name for the figurines people put on the headstones, but some of them are getting knocked off, broke, and the motor, motor was scattering them. So um, uh, would somebody mind getting with the proper staff and asking them if they need some help or what's going on there? Sure. We'll, t we'll take care of that, and I'll, and I'll update okay. everyone. Okay. When you get home, call. Ridge That's line, all I have. Thank you. Is it Ridgeline, Mike? <laughs> yes, sir. Correct. I know they they way behind. They're very much behind, so that might have something to do with it. Yeah. They're short-staffed, and they're behind. All right. Anybody have anything else? Me nope, either. that's it. Thank you. Let's go home. Thank you. Get out of here. <clears throat>